Okay, can you all see that? <clears throat> okay, can you just walk us through um, what you'd like to do? Sure. So, am I allowed to open this, I guess? Or? Well, I, I can, you just have to tell me what to do with it. I'm, oh, I have okay. control over it. Okay. Please go, go downstairs, you guys. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so there um, you should, on the application, you can see there's a, um, there's a plot site, and we just would like to put in a swing set in the backyard. Um, I have the swing set in there, like a picture of it and everything. Sorry, the kids for whom the swing set is are, are um, not downstairs where they're supposed to be. Shh, it's not, this is not funny. Go downstairs. <laughs> go on. Go. My husband is still working and was not is not home like he was supposed to be. Sorry. Okay, yeah. So that is the swing set. I got a word. Put it in my room. I need to go to the bathroom. Okay, so three downstairs. Okay, right is there anything else? Um, that's yeah. So that's pretty much it. It's we we wouldn't be doing any sort of like plot preparation or anything for for the swing set. It would just go on top of the grass in sort of the back area. Um, if you want to go to the to the plot, I can show you. Um, so, yeah, so the front of the house faces Willow Street and the side um, faces Westway. And so it would be the, this sort of back area by the, um, I don't know if you can see my cursor here, so back area behind, like behind the garage and there's some hedges yeah, sure. here. So it wouldn't really be visible from any main road or anything. Okay, do you have anything else to add? I don't think so. Okay. Um, Straightforward. Jim, Jim, I don't do you know have if any there's questions? anything else you need to know. Jim, do you have any questions? Um, how tall is that fence on Willow Street? It's a legendary wooden fence. How tall is the fence? Would you know how? how uh, is is the swing set going to be visible from Willow Street? Well, so along this the line, you could see this like ten point five line um, right here. Like it goes off of this this previous addition that that they had done. There is a line of of hedges to give some privacy to the backyard already. Um, okay, so I don't good. think it would be visible from Willow Street. Oh, okay. No other questions. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Darren, do you have any questions? No questions. Thank you. Art, do you have any questions? No. No questions. Okay. Chris, do you have any questions? Chris, is Chris, uh, Chris, can you hear me? I think Chris is yeah, I just unmuted my screen. I'm going to hang up my phone. Can you hear me? Sorry, do you have any, yeah, do you have any questions? Can't hear you. I'm uh, I'm connecting to audio because my phone wasn't working. I guess. Can you hear me now? Okay. okay. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Sorry about that. So, um, when I visited the site, I noticed that there's a there's a beautiful hedge that comes down 
um, down Willow Street towards Old South, um, but um, it stops kind of halfway. And I wondered if the if the play set could be pushed a little bit closer to the garage than you've presently shown it on the on the site plan. It would it would be um, more hidden from sight from um, Willow Street. That is certainly possible. The um, there's a there's a there's a kind of a dimension line on your site plan. I think it, I'm trying to rem it's like it was like a 76 foot kind of just a dimension line. And I think if if you were to push it closer to that dimension line, that would um really kind of hide it. Or maybe it, it was 79.4 feet. Um, so if, if it could go a little bit closer to that line, again, um, I think it's going to be hidden nicely from Westway behind the garage. But if it could be closer to the 79.4, that dimension line, it would, um, I think the hedge on Willow would also um, obstruct it pretty well. Do you understand what I was um, suggesting? Yes. So the, the, there is a, um, that should be totally fine to do. There's a, a garden that's there right now, like a stand up garden that I just, I wasn't entirely sure. It's not shown on the plot plan. Okay. So that's kind of why I put it in there, but um, it, sh it should be only a few feet to be entirely hidden behind that hedge. So that is fine to do should be fine okay. to do. Thank you. That was my only comment. Thanks, Chris. <clears throat> um, I don't have any questions really, although I, you know, these, I think you're in a tough situation because you have a corner lot and it's kind of hard to hide the, um, that massive swing set, but, um, so I, basically what Chris has said, I think the bet, the more you can try and just, um, keep it as hidden as possible would be preferred. Um, okay, and uh, that's all I have. And I did not receive any letters in favor of this application. I did not receive any letters uh, opposed to this application. So the hearing is closed. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is Kevin Lignac, 72 Willow Street in Southport, a property located at 72 Willow Street in Southport, and it's for A, remove driveway gates, B, new opening and fence posts, C, new landing at garage door, D, new bluestone walkways, E, new lights, F, change previously approved patio, koi pond, G, relocate generator, and H, fire pit. And I'd just like to remind uh, the commissioners and <clears throat> um, applicants to mute yourself if you're not, if you're not speaking, because um, you can hear the background noise and it's, it can be, um, um, hard to hard to speak and hear other people. Okay. Good afternoon, and also Adam. Alyssa. Yeah, sorry, Jack. Just one more thing. Alyssa Stack show as is present, right? Uh, she arrived, I think, around four twenty or so. So thanks, Jack. Go ahead. Great. I'm going to try to share my screen here if I could. Okay, so um, I'm representing Kevin for this application and um, Kevin hired um, Lisa Barton to design some gardens and landscaping for his property. So in consultation with her, we're back um, and we're requesting some modifications to what had been approved previously on the site plan that you saw a few months ago. And I'll just go through them on the site plan initially. Um, we wish to um, eliminate the presently there are swinging gates. They're not electric gates. They're manual swinging gates on the uh, entrance from Old South Road and we're uh, requesting to um, remove those gates. We're also requesting to create a new opening in the fence for like a pedestrian uh, opening here, which is about, I don't know, six or seven feet away from the driveway. 
and I actually think this is a, a terrific idea. Uh, the, um, the UPS guy has been uh, tossing stuff on the front porch. And I think actually George Clark has been doing him a favor and bringing the stuff around to the back. And once this new mudroom is, is completed, it really will be a better place for things to be dropped off and also for visitors to come into the house. So that's what we're proposing. And um, in order to accomplish that, there's a generator that's been placed here. It's been there for a long time and it was never successfully screened uh, from view. And what we'd like to do is move that generator back to where we, we already got approved to have our little air, new air conditioning unit back here. We'd like to put the generator next to the air conditioning unit and this will all get screened by um, Evergreens. It's a 24 kW Generac unit that we're proposing. It's 28 inches high, 26 inches wide, and 48 inches long. And I do have a cut sheet on that that I can share with you later. We are pr proposing um, a bluestone sidewalk from this new opening that will go back to the mudroom. And there's a little connector sidewalk here, another connector sidewalk here. We're also proposing a sidewalk from the existing patio. There's a there is an existing opening here, and we'd like to put a sidewalk that runs around and connects to the existing steps that come up onto the front porch and uh, afford access to this actually nice little side yard on the north side of the house. Um, the these walkways are proposed to be bluestone stepping stones. And they're placed in a bed of native stone, which is going to be lined with steel edging. We're also proposing uh, some minor changes in the area around the pool, which I think re represents not a big change. But we, I think we moved the koi pond, we changed the shape of the patio a little bit, and there's this three part sidewalk of bluestone pavers that are set into the grass. This is all set behind a, a hedge that'll be a living hedge with, you know, a, a pool fence behind it. And we're also proposing a little um, stoop, uh, bluestone stoop at this rear entry to the garage, to the barn. There's also going to be, excuse me, there's also going to be a, a fire pit. And this is a, it's not one I'm familiar with, but it's similar to the um, RH fire pits that we have used. It's uh, 55 inches long, it's 33 inches wide, and it's 15 inches high. So it's, you know, it may not be visible too, too much from the sidewalk. I'm not quite sure how it'll sit, but there's, there's a stone wall here. I, I think it'll be hard to see. That is fed directly from the house by natural gas. It's not one of the ones that has a propane tank in it. And finally, in terms of lighting, we have some lighting that we hadn't figured out the first time we came to you. Firstly, on the uh, on the garage, we have um, this Bavolo lantern. There are two sizes. We're proposing the 27 inch size on the on the garage and the 20 inch size on the um, either side of the Mudroom entry, and we're doing it without the scroll. The, the cut sheet from the company shows a scroll. That's optional. You can get it rear mounted without the scroll. We're also proposing um, some lighting on the ground. There's a bullet light here, which is going to be mounted in this fashion horizontally, so it's not shining up at anything. And then there's, uh, I think. Six of these, they're very small, three inch high, two plus inches wide um, ground lights, directional ground lights at sidewalk locations. This light here, I believe, is two watts, and these, I believe, are six watts. And everything will be either incandescent, which in the case of the lanterns, it may be an incandescent bulb, but if it's, they do make some of these lantern bulbs in LED. And if they choose that, it'll be a 2700K uh, color temperature on all the lighting. And I'll go back and show you where the lights are going. 
so the the directional lights the bullet lights are going here and here there's a pair of directional lights here and i think this is misplaced this one is supposed to be right next to the um sidewalk symmetrical with the one here there are two here and there are two here and then we have a lantern on the barn and we have two lanterns on the mudroom there are two lights in the pool that you won't see but they're on the on the plan and uh i believe that's everything so i'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have <clears throat> oh i didn't show you the generator let me just show you the generator here's the fire pit that's this one here and here's the generator and that's it Thank you, Jack. Uh, Alyssa, do you have any questions? I don't have any questions, thanks. Thank you. Chris, do you have any questions? Hi, yeah, thanks um, for your presentation, Jack. Um, so the, those, um, those directional lights that you've got, um, it, it looks like you've got them kind of at the, uh, where the driveway meets the um walks into into the house and then uh kind of on old south where the sidewalk meets the new walk and i guess at the where the driveway meets um meets the sidewalk pretty much so there are there eight of them is that right there's actually only two of the of those directional light. There's there's six of the of the little tiny disc lights. There's two here, two here, and two here. And there's two proposed to go, those bullet lights proposed to go here. So there's a total of eight lights of which two are that bullet type. So the disc lights are, are ground mounted and they shine up? They shine horizontally. I'll go back to the cut sheet. They have like a little, they're similar to the lights that I, you may recall, I, I used these over at the um, 187 Westway a couple months ago. Yeah. So you can, you can aim this. This is the, where the light is. It comes out horizontally. So it's, it's kind of unobtrusive. And so it, um, it really gets, it, it gets recessed into the ground, except for that little. That's right. Kind of yeah. There's a, cover. there's a, like a canister that gets stuck okay. into the ground. And then you would just spin that cover to direct to direct the light pattern. Yeah, so we'd probably aim it at 45 degree angle, you know, on, on either side of the sidewalk facing away mm -hmm. from the street. Okay. And then and then my other question is on those um Bevelo lanterns, the cut sheet called for them to be either gas or electric. I assume they're going to be electric, but I don't think it specifies. Yeah, you know, we, we've used the gas ones near salt water, but they don't recommend it. So I always try to discourage people. Yeah, they're beautiful, but they have a, you turn them on with a, an electric switch and the salt air gets into the switches and they stop working. Whereas if okay. they're electric, they um, it's just direct wired. Okay. Um, thank you. Those were my only questions. Thank you. Thank, thanks, Chris. Uh, Art, do you have any questions? Uh, no, it looks good, Jack. Thank, thank you. you. Darren, do you have any questions? No questions for me. Okay, and Jim, questions? Uh, on mute. Uh, thank you, Jack. No questions. Okay. Um, I don't really have any questions. I guess I, I you know, talking about the number of fixtures you have um, seems sort of redundant to have um, the bullet fixtures on both sides of the uh, fence or the, the opening. Yeah, I think I think this is confusing because this. If you can see my cursor, this this light here is one of yeah. those disc lights, and it's supposed to be next to the sidewalk. But when right. it got drawn, so do you really got, do you really think it? 
do you really think you need to have one on each side of the sidewalk? Or would just like one on one on just one fixture on one side be sufficient? I mean, because the idea is you just want to um, illuminate the walkway, right? Correct. Yeah, I, I mean, probably I mean, if you if you aim at a, at a forty five degree angle, you you accomplish what you need to. So you know, if you were to stipulate just one per sidewalk, you know, we've got six of them. You know, I think if we had this one here, yeah, we'd yeah. probably get the job done. This one here could be aimed away from the street, and this one here could be aimed away from the street. I mean, they're very they're very small fixtures in any case. Yeah, no, I know. There's just a number of them. And do you think the bullet fixtures are necessary? I mean, they're they're just illuminating the, the driveway essentially, right? Yeah. I mean I think I think they are it's something that they want, whether it's really you know, that's not the darkest part of town there. And there is going to be lighting yeah. on the house and the barn. So, you know, if you, again if you want to and again it's like Go ahead. You know, I've got I've got a little bit of concern about what snow plowing will will do to those too. So, you know, it wouldn't be the end of the world, I suppose, if we uh, we considered the bullet lights. Okay, well, we'll talk about it. Other than that, I I didn't don't have any other questions. Um, and I did not receive any uh, emails in favor of this application. I did not receive any emails post to this application. So uh, the hearing is closed. Thank you, Jack. Okay, thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda uh, is Old South Road LLC, 171 Old South Road <clears throat> in Southport. The property located at 171 Old South Road in Southport for a changes to previously approved windows and B, garage uh, fireplace roof flue, C, garage condenser unit. Good afternoon, it's Jack Franzen here again. I'm representing Fred Ryan on this application <clears throat> and we're asking for a couple changes to what was approved before and some additions. Uh, the windows that we're talking about are on the side. They're on the, the east side and the west side of the house. And the way the windows are set up, um, there's a laundry room right here uh, on the, I guess it's on the east side. And this window is, is actually not exactly stacked on this window, and it's not the same size. It's actually closer in size to the window that's up on the second floor. So what we uh, we're proposing was to move this window and stack it under the window on the second floor, which also works better inside the laundry room, you know, just because of where the equipment had to go for the machines. And we think it actually looks better there. Um, the other windows that we're talking about are on the west side. <clears throat> the chimney is, is uh, located on the gable end there. And it's not centered on the gable, it's offset. So neither one of these windows that are in the middle of that gable can be centered on the gable as you as you might expect. What we're proposing to do is to eliminate this window on the attic level and to replace the window that's um, here with a half window. The reason for that is there's a shower in this location and a Half window will work, a full window will be awkward on the inside. And upstairs, there's a bed going against this wall. This is a one of the kids' bedrooms. The um, other part of the application is we'd like to put a, um, a fireplace in the loft over the garage, and it uh, requires a, a chimney. It's a gas-fired chimney, and there's a metal flue. It's, coming out of the shed dormer, it's centered on the dormer, and it is uh, 24 inches above the ridge. Um, and it's gonna be painted black, so it won't be a shiny, you know, aluminum or zinc or chromium or whatever finish on it. It'll be unobtrusive. The last part of the application is 
we need um, to put a condensing unit for the garage over here. It's too far to run to the the little equipment farm that we created here in the original application. So we'd like to put this AC unit um, next to the garage. It's, I guess it would be sort of in the um, the northwest corner, and it's going to be all um, surrounded by evergreens. And that unit is. 24 inches square and it's 35 inches high. Uh, so it's just not as big as some of the other ones. It's probably like a couple tons or so, ton and a half. And that is it. I'm happy to answer any questions. <clears throat> Thank you, Jack. Um, uh, Jim, would you like to start? Questions. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Jim. Alyssa. I don't have any questions. Thank you, uh, Darren. No questions for me. Thank you, Art. Uh, none, Adam. Thank you. And uh, Chris. No questions for me. Thank you. I don't think I have any questions either, Jack. Um, and I did not receive any letters in favor of this application. I did not receive any letters opposed to this application. So the hearing is closed. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is um, Margaret and Stephen Staunton. 560 Pequot Avenue for property located at 560 Pequot Avenue in Southport or A, additions to existing garage, B, new sidewalks, C, new patio, D, remove existing patio, E, change driveway, and F, new lights. Good afternoon. It's Jack Franson here again representing uh, Meg and Steve Staunton. This property is at 560 Pequot Avenue. It's actually not a very old house but it was designed back in 1950 by Roswell Barrett, who was a very, at the time, and up until actually, I think the 1990s, was a very prominent architect in Southport who lived at 776 Pequot. And um, at that time, in the, in the early 50s, it was pretty common for people to build reproduction. So it's not really a colonial revival, it's a colonial reproduction. And if you if you could go back in time, um, here's the, this is the an old map that dates somewhere between 1867 and 1875. And you can see um, this is the property here. So there was a house here many years ago, it belonged to one of the Bulkleys. And Rise Barrett designed a house to look like an old salt box. And he actually had shimmed the, um, the gable so that the roof looked like it was sagging. And I think about 10 years ago, somebody applied to have that you know, removed and straighten out the ridge line. So it, it still looks like an old salt box, but not as old. It looks, looks younger now than it did then. Um, what we're proposing to do is to do um, to, to two additions on the existing garage. Um, the first part of it is to add about 10 feet on the front of the garage. And the purpose of that is to extend the, uh, there's like a little gam gambrel transfers gable that faces the driveway. And um, we're trying to make the, there is a guest suite above the garage. We're trying to make it into an accessible in-law suite. So the idea is to create a little sitting area there. Also, the garage below, if you look at the plan, is very awkward. There's there's a chimney that goes all the way up to the guest suite that's here, and the existing stair is here. So you have one parking bay that's not even 15 feet deep, and this one here that you just can't use. So the goal is to create a a real two car garage with uh, one bay that's you know ends up being about 16 feet deep you still have the chimney to deal with and the other bay being you know almost a normal bay the other part of this is to add a little bit on the back of the house and um, 
what we're doing there is we're adding a small gym, we're extending the breezeway, and we are um, also creating a space in the roof line on the back for a lift, which will make, um, you know, if somebody's not able to go up the stairs, they'll be able to use the lift to get up to that suite. The existing house, um, here's the main salt box part. Um, here's the garage. There's a breezeway with door and side lights, existing garage doors. And then here's the transverse gable I was talking about. The plan is to actually extend that transverse gable out about eight and a half feet. And then to wrap the roof um, of the garage extension around that. And in doing so, uh, we're going to match the pitch that's on the sheds on the back of the house. On the rear of the house, the plan is to um, make this extension here. And then this is for the lift. There's like a little simple gable dormer. So this is the existing rear of the house. And this is the proposed rear of the house. So this will be the gym. And this will be the uh, space that allows for the lift. We're going to relocate the existing doors and side lights. Uh, we're going to reuse the existing garage doors. Um, partly out of choice, but partly out of necessity because this is in the um, AE flood zone. So there's a threshold beyond which we can't spend money on this and doing improvements or else it triggers lifting the house and, and filling the basement in. So we're doing this um, in this fashion. Uh, we're also planning to put a lantern on the garage, which will match lanterns that are on the house now. We're using windows that are, you know, SDL, all wood. And um, we're also proposing to do some sidewalks. Go back to the site plan. We're planning to uh, create this new sidewalk, extending it out to the driveway all the way up to the breezeway. We're also planning to remove this existing patio. I'm not sure how visible it is, but it's underneath where the proposed gym addition is going. And we're also planning to re recontour the driveway. So the driveway will um, be moved back, I guess about six or seven feet here. Same thing over here. You can see the dotted line show you where the existing driveway is now. This shows you where the sconce is going for the garage. And I think that is it. So I will let you ask any questions that you might have. <clears throat> okay, thanks, Jack. Uh, Chris, let's start. Thank you. Uh, no, no questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, Art, any questions? Uh, no, thanks, Adam. Darren, do you have any questions? No, thank you. And Jim, do you have any questions? One question, Jack. You said that you're moving that driveway back. Do uh, you mean closer to Pequot Road or? Yes, it moves like if you look at right here, the the farthest it moves back is about. I'm guessing about seven feet closer to Pequot, and it's hard to see but because right now there's a, there's a huge hedge. You know where. When you drive down Pequot, you can hardly see this driveway because right, of the right. hedge, and, right. which is, I think, a good thing. But they're planning to keep the hedge in any case. So, so by back, you mean down? In, in, yeah, in down this, towards in this, towards the retaining wall in Pequot. Right, right. Okay, thank you, thank you, Jack. No other questions. And, and I and I should say, mm -hmm. once if if you approve this, this will give us information that we need to proceed with wetlands because there's a uh, there's a, a regulated area to the north of this property between the church and, and the house. And, uh, you know, we think that they'll approve this, but, you know, we have to show them what, what we want to do first. Melissa, do you have any questions? 
And thank you, Jack. Thank I you. All right, uh, Jack, and I don't have any questions. Um, and I did not receive any letters in favor of this application. I did not receive any letters opposed to this application, so the hearing is closed. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is uh, Gail Caruso, 561 Pequot Avenue, for property located at 561 Pequot Avenue, for A, railing, B, SCL doors and sidelights, C, new patio, D, stoop, E, lanterns, and F, enclosed covered porch. Good afternoon, I'm Jack Franzen here again, uh, representing Gail and Larry Caruso. Um, this house is right across the street from the one I just discussed. Um, now this house is, is not old and it doesn't look old. It was built on raw land in 1956, prior to the inception of the historic district in 1966, uh, which might explain the curious um, fact that the, the front of the house is aluminum siding. The back of the house is actually wood siding and, and wood windows, but at some point, and I think it probably happened before 1966, the front of the house was clad with um, aluminum siding. Most of what we're doing here is interior renovation, but uh, to accomplish this, uh, we're we're trying to winterize the existing enclosed porch, and uh, we're also proposing to enclose a piece of porch that's recessed into the rear of the house. Uh, we need to um, replace the existing fenestration. It's all single glazed, sort of, you know, uh, glorified storm door construction with uh, new wood SDL doors and side lights on the front and on the rear with a wood slider that has two panels that operate and two that are uh, inoperable, that are side um, panels. We're also planning to replace the fascia on the front porch and remove the columns that are there. And if you, if you look at the house now, there are two columns and then there's this curved fascia. The columns are actually, I think, maybe the only thing that's wood on the front of the house. And the fascia is aluminum. And these columns don't do anything. You can move them side to side. They are like swinging pendulums. So what we're planning to do is just replace the, the fascia and it will be wood. Um, we're gonna replace it going straight across and we're proposing to put a door in the middle and two matching full height side lights. On the rear, there's a recessed covered porch here a little kitchen window. We're proposing to move that window to a new location, build this wall, you know, enclosing that porch and replace these um, uh, single glazed um, doors or panels, if you want to call them that, with a slider, which will come out onto a stoop and stairs going down to the backyard. We are putting a railing here, no pickets, but just a wrought iron railing. Uh, because when you come straight out, there's got to be a landing. And uh, we are proposing a light on the rear, which is here. I'm not sure how much of this is, is really visible, but it looks to me like you could see some of it from um, Center Street, looking behind the um, uh, house on the corner. And here's a cut sheet for simulated divided light um, fenestration that we're proposing. Um, everything on the back will remain wood. The stoop is stucco. It'll have blue stone paving and treads. Uh, the railing is wrought iron. Uh, the, there is no proposed new lighting on the front porch. There is an existing sconce over here that we're going to keep. So um, that sums it up. Did I answer any questions? <clears throat> Thanks, Jack. Uh, Darren? No questions for me. Okay, Art. Not for me, Adam. Thank you, uh, Chris. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks, Jack, for your presentation. 
just curious, um, the new windows and doors, who's the manufacturer of them? We haven't decided yet whether we would like it to be Marvin, but we're going to also get bids from other companies like perhaps Pella or Geldwin. Okay. Um, yeah, I noticed that the cut sheets were kind of generic, so I was curious as to who you were proposing. Okay, uh, that was my only question. Thank you. Thank you. Jim, do you have any questions? No questions, thank you. Anna Lisa? No questions for me, thanks. And I do not have any questions, Jack. Um, did not receive any letters in favor of this application, and I did not receive any letters opposing this application. So the hearing's closed. Thanks. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is Jill Pergara, 271 Old Post Road in Fairfield for property located at 271 Old Post Road in Fairfield for A, replace existing picket fence with six foot high picket fence. Um, and new four foot high picket fence. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, Adam, I didn't come prepared with the digital version of it, so I was hoping that you could maybe pull that up for my application. Sure. Thank you. Yes, sir. So um, I live on the Old Post Road in the Old Post Road Historic District. And we currently have um, fencing all can around there. Sorry, could you just uh, um, identify yourself for the record, please? Oh, sure. My name's Jill Vergara, and um, I'm the owner of 271 Old Post Road. And I submitted an application to um, replace some of our picket fencing with um, paneled fencing. Um, we currently, our whole property is surrounded by some type of fencing. Most of it is picket, I um, I probably about 60% is picket, 40% is the high six foot paneling. Um, all of the sides that um, we have with our budding neighbors have the six foot paneling currently. Um, about two years ago, we had submitted an application to replace our picket fencing um, that goes all along the front of the house uh, up to that bay window. I don't know if you can see it in it. There's a picture of it on, on the surveyor certificate in our application. So I have. Is there something missing? Oh, I don't see it pulling up from. Um, oh, do I? Can I click on this? No, oh. no. Okay, sorry. Is there another image that's missing? Uh, I, I just, I don't know if um, you all needed me needed a visual representation of what I submitted in the application because it is on the surveyor's certificate. You can see where there's existing paneled fencing and where I'm proposing to put in to replace some of the picket fencing with um, higher paneled fencing. Um, but if, if you don't need that, I can just talk you through it this way. Adam, the screen okay. that you're sharing is just, is your files only. It's not, it doesn't, uh, oh. it's not open oh, sorry. yet. Okay, hang on a second. Where it is. How's that? Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Um, okay. so the, the fencing that I, that we had, um, gotten approved 2 years ago, it was, it just replaced the picket fencing. That we had from um, the midline next to our budding old post road neighbor and wrapped around the front and went to about um, where that bay window is on the side of our house. We didn't replace all of it. So the remaining picket fence that goes from that bay window 
down to um, down Robson Place. That's all very old and it's falling apart. Um, we we would really like to get a higher privacy fence there because we've had a problem of people um, mistaking our side door because there's an entrance right at the side there. Um, and the way that the lower fence is with the gate entryway makes it seem like that's um, an entrance into our house for unexpected visitors. So we've gotten you know, delivery men there and it, that goes right into our family room. So it's a little disconcerting. So um, we were hoping that we can get um, from that bay window down um, that six foot paneled fencing, similar to the 323 Old Post Road house that was approved a few years ago. Um, and I think that they, they had that done because it, they're like us, we're on a corner, so it's highly visible and they just needed that additional privacy. Okay. Anything else to add? I don't think so. Okay, Chris, would you like to start questions? Sure, thanks, Adam. Um, thank you for your presentation, Jill. A couple of quick questions. Um, it looks like there, um, there's a section of the existing picket fence that you're proposing to replace that doesn't look to be rotted at all. Um, um, and it would go down to kind of where the steps are to where the gate is, like from the gate uh, to the north seems to be okay, but it seems like it may be more of a privacy issue than a, a rotting issue. Oh, yeah. well, none of that fencing was replaced so it's all original to um and we purchased the house in um 2009 and so um there are there are sections all along that side where there's pieces rotting out um where we had replaced the fence it went um up to that kind of like that stair area with our where the um entry gate is exactly yeah, so the from the stair area um, towards the old post road seems to all be good, but it yeah. looks like there's about a you know a fifteen a foot. There, foot there's long a section yeah that, so, you're, that you're looking to replace, um, not because it's rotted, but because it's you know you want to change it to a different type of fence. We um, had and, replaced that about two years ago, and it also peeks out from where our privacy bushes are. Yeah, okay. And then yeah. um, I noticed also that that there was a gate and kind of a walkway. I guess you're not planning on keeping a gate there. You wanna just put up a, a privacy fence there without a gate? The one that goes, that I'm proposing to go across the property? No, um, no, between Robson Place and your house, right now there's a there's a walking way gate um, to get to that little stoop, and then down further there's um, a gate or a driveway, an old oh. driveway. And um, are you you're not proposing to replace those gates? Yes, to those will be gates also, but they'll be higher. So um, we will still need to have um, access to that driveway because we do pull into it for when there are snowstorms. So we need to be able to open it up. Um, and it, it would just be um, the six foot paneled gates. Okay, yeah, because I was confused because you don't talk about gates, adding gates. Um, okay, that's uh, those were my questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, or do you have any questions? None for me, Adam. None for you, okay. Darren, do you have any questions? Not for me, no. Okay. Jim, questions? No questions, thank you. And Alyssa? I don't have any questions. 
Okay. So, um, if I get this right, you're, you're basically that this is a 4 foot fence in front. This is all the picket fence currently is 3 foot and then um, our existing paneled fencing. Um, that you can see in the thicker black line um, that is exists currently that's 6 foot. Okay, I guess then, my concern is the fact that they are going to go from a now you're saying it's a 3 the existing picket fence is 3 feet. You said it's all 3 feet. Yes. So then you're going at you're going to you're going to this to this um, point where you're going to three different types of fences are going to be uh, intersecting essentially you're going to have a four foot fence a three foot fence and a six foot fence. We thought that I we we thought that the four foot fencing would be more palatable to the HDC, but if you would prefer it to be consistent with the six foot fence, that's you're fine with that. And the six foot fence is going to be it's going to be a picket fence. The six foot fence I mean, will match our paneled fencing that exists already. It's um, pan okay. it's not picket. It's paneled. Um, usually, when somebody does, uh, you know, submits an application for a fence, we require some sort of um, um, visual representation of what the fence is going to look like. Um, oh, it, it will. I wish you had taken a picture of the existing oh. fence, you know, the fence that you intend to put it in, put in there. Um, it, it, it will be identical to what we have right now. Currently, the, um, the 6 foot fence and we, we actually have the 4 foot fence. On that other area where there's a trellis on the other side of our house. Um, right here. Yeah. Is it does it uh, is it perpendicular to this fence? Yes, it, it will almost be exactly. Um, it, it would visually be exactly where this we're proposing that other fence to be on the other side of the house. So right here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't have any other questions. Um, I did not receive any uh, letters in favor of this application and I did not receive any letters opposing this application. So uh, the hearing's closed. Thank you. Thanks. Next item on the agenda is Pequot Yacht Club, 647 Harbor Road in Southport for property located at 647 Harbor Road in Southport for A, replace existing guardrail and B, new condenser units. Yes. Um, hi, Adam. This is Baman Azarm. I'm the house chair of the Quite Yacht Club, and I'll be uh, presenting the application. Um, <clears throat> um, as you know, we had some storm damage, and we've re replaced um, quite a few things at the Yacht Club. Uh, this actually does not relate to the storm damage. <clears throat> it is um, regarding a uh, heating system that we had to replace. Um, excuse me. Let me just um, share. Um, okay, that's not coming up. Let's share. Okay, are you able to see my screen? Yes, works. Great. Okay, great. Um, um, so, essentially, this is uh, regarding installing some condensers on the side porch um, that um, uh, will uh, allow the new um, heating system and filtration system that we installed for COVID that has air conditioning um, uh, capabilities to be able to use for, uh, for air conditioning as well. Um, there is a side porch that we had previously talked about uh, when we talked about putting railings up for the um, the second deck, and we had mentioned that we would like to um, actually replace the existing railing um, of the side porch to match the uh, the railing of the, the new railing of um, uh, of the second deck uh, that we had to replace. So what we're proposing to do here is actually go ahead and replace the railing, but also add the um, 
the condenser units that are going to be for the air conditioning uh, system. Um, the condensing units would be, um, uh, we, we made sure that we, we got them in a size that were actually um, uh, 27 inches high, which is below the sill of the windows that are uh, on the building um, uh, in front of that porch. And um, so you would, uh, they would be um, uh, backed against the wall uh, and not um, obstructing the windows themselves. Uh, and they're also going to be recessed back towards the wall as close to the wall as we can get. Um, and then with a new railing in place that are going to be uh, 42 inches high instead of the 30 inches high that they are now, uh, they should be um, not uh, very visible. Of course, if you're looking up there um, and you're looking for them, you will, you will be able to see them. But uh, in general, you'll be able to see the railing that are going to be white and these tucked back in towards the build, building. Uh, so uh, they're not going to be very conspicuous. Um, happy to answer any questions that um, anyone has. Okay, thank you, Darren. I don't have any questions. Thank you. Hart. I think we've lost Hart. Okay, Chris. Hi, uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about the um, the location of those condensers being um, kind of prominently located um, off of the lawn, right on the harbor, up in the air, um, not screened from the public view. And so I don't think they're appropriate. Um, I. I know that there's probably not a whole lot of great potential locations for them, but this is one that I um, am thinking is not appropriate. I don't know, maybe you could explain a little bit about why you chose to locate them there. Um, certainly, there's actually, um, we uh, did a uh, lot of visual walking around, including with uh, the architects that we're working with. And there is actually um, uh, no places on that building that they would uh, not be as um, concealed as they are here. So any place else um, that we would put them, they would be actually much more visible. Here we feel that because they're going to be recessed back and there's going to be the railing that's going to be higher than the condensers themselves, um, they're going to be as con uh, inconspicuous as uh, as we possibly can get them. Now, obviously, with the drawing, you 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 know they're highlighted so you can see their location. Um, but um, uh, in, in reality, um, the railing is going to be white and and quite a bit in front of them. These are going to be recessed back against the wall. They're going to be only twenty seven inches high. Um, the right and left one are going to be centered. Um, uh, uh, on the on the windows um, that are flanking the, uh, the 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 two sides, and then the two smaller ones are going to be centered um, within the center window. So all in all, uh, hopefully, when somebody is looking at them, they're going to be seeing the railing, they're going to be seeing the windows, and the condensers obviously are going to um, be visible. But hopefully. Um, in the background enough where they're not going to be a, a, a visual um, eyesore. Okay. Um, and I, I noticed that you also, um, you didn't indicate any potential um, like electrical disconnect switches um, that probably each one of these units is gonna need and um, perhaps line sets and um, maybe condensate um, drains as well. Um, do you um, do you know, are there gonna, where are the air handlers that 
products that are supported by these condensers, are they up in the attic? Um, yes, they are. There actually, there is uh, one air handler that takes two of those for the lower floor and two other air handlers that are, uh, the, and all of these are in the attic and two other okay. air handlers that are uh, for the second floor. Um, so and where, where are you proposing to run the line sets uh, to these condensers? Um, the line sets are going Would to be, um, they're, they're going to be um, uh, lined within a copper um, gutter type of thing that's going to be coming up. And there's, you, you don't see the copper leaders coming down from the copper gutters that are up there, but they'll be very much um, in keeping the same as the uh, round copper uh, leaders that are coming down. And then the disconnects are actually going to be behind the units against the wall, so they will not be visible. So you're going to have like four copper, like vertical um, gutter leader looking um, pipes coming down from the. Just two. Uh, there will be um, two in between the two, uh, uh, the um, centered between the right and, and left windows in between them. And they will um, each uh, leader coming down will take. Um, uh, the piping of, uh, of two of the units each. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and I, I mean, you've already said this, I think, but just to be clear, you've, you've researched other possible locations on the property and, and this was what you came up with for the least obtrusive and best, best solution. Well, I absolutely we've really um, racked our brain. I mean, we, we even thought about, you know, is there any way of putting brackets up in the back over the awning that's there that you're not seeing on this picture um, in order to hang them out there, but they would be really visible from uh, from the water. Um, we have uh, we, we've looked everywhere. Um, and and really we found that uh, and, and we've even thought about the possibility of going under the deck, but unfortunately, the deck gets flooded. Um, yeah. on, on high, high water. Um, right. yeah. So, um, unfortunately, yeah. um, there's no other place, but fortunately we really feel that putting them here are, they're going to be as uh, inconspicuous as they can be within the and, property. And just to kind of press that a little bit further, um, I apologize for this, but so the South elevation, which is where they are. The opposite elevation, the north elevation, which is kind of you know where your boat yard is, and it's less prominent. There's there's no there's no location over there. There and there is none, and yeah, there's <clears throat> it's just a blank a brick wall that goes all the way from uh, the roof and the gutter area all the way down to the parking area, and then um, you see essentially the opposite of the second floor deck as you see here. So right. um, they, it would be why very weird. Why couldn't they go there? Why couldn't they go there? Um, I'm sorry, on, on, on the other side of the building, they, yeah. they, would, they would be extremely visible from anybody walking by and they would, um, they would have to go on brackets and hang um, out, you know, out from the wall. Um, it, it, uh, it, it really would, would look terrible. Uh, here, at least, there, there's a, already a porch, there's deck, there are columns that take the eye away from the condensers that are going to be set back uh, against the wall and below the window. So, okay. Thank you very much for answering my questions. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Uh, Jim. <clears throat> yeah, I agree with Chris. This is, uh, this is, you know, if you picture an image of, of town of Fairfield, this is it. This is a, one of the most beautiful views. And the view of the, the west end of that building is uh, iconic. Um, so, Chris, I, I share your concerns. What color are these conjectures going to be? Uh, the condensers are, are regular um, uh, air conditioning condensers. They are um, the parts of it are are the grills, which are you can see some black around it. There's a um, little bit of a brown around, and on the top, you know, they have the 
the grill with the fan, which um, obviously no one's going to see the top parts of them. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So they, 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 is it fair to say the predominant color will be black? Um, they'll be brownish black. There's a grill and there's also their, their brownish, um, tannish color. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think they're any different than, than most condensers that are, that are out there. The west end of the Yacht Club property, the end adjacent to the public park, uh, there are large shrubs there. There's no way of putting it in amongst those shrubs. Um, well, um, you know, th there is a possibility with that, the, the lines um, coming down from the attic and going down and then having to go underneath and go all the way over there. Um, it's, it, uh, I don't know for sure, but it sounds improbable that the length of those lines would be, um, would be something that the uh, AC units would, would be able to handle. Um, but also, um, yeah, I, I, I'm really not sure. That that area was, and then we would have to get electricity over there as well. Um, that area was um, not some place we we looked at, um, and maybe it was because of the the distance from the building. I, I uh, and there's no other place, uh, no other place on the the. the the east side, the north side of the, of the property in, near the parking lot. There's no other place there. There, there really this is not. Up, this, um, this is one of the most yeah. iconic views in town. It's not in Fairfield County. Yes, and, and, and you know, we, we obviously appreciate that. And we, um, we, we are very, very concerned ourselves to make sure that the building um, looks and feels um, like it belongs there mm -hmm. and there's, yeah. there's no eyesores. Um, you know, that's why we were very careful in getting units that are, um, um, I don't know if they call these pancake, but they're the lowest units that we could get at 27 inches high, making right. sure that they were below the windowsill, that they could fit all the way against the, 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 the wall and not, not come out. And um, we really do feel that with the railing, the way they're going to be, that they're, they're not going to be um, uh, that as com conspicuous as, as you think that they will be. <clears throat> I lived right across the street for many years, so I'm, I'm, I'm very sensitive about that location. Okay, thank you very much. No other questions. Thank you. Thanks, Chair Melissa. No questions for me, thanks. Thank you. Um, so, Bob, and I, I'm, one question I have is, um, it seems like core condensing units is an awful lot for building the size. Mm -hmm. I mean, is, there a, is it because yeah. the set they're so small? No, you know, um, there was um, an engineered study done for air conditioning uh, units uh, about 10 years ago. And, um, uh, and the heating system was still um, functioning okay. Uh, it was uh, with the advent of COVID hitting and, and needing um, and, the, and the units getting older, uh, we looked into L filtration, air circulation and, and new units, high, high efficiency units. Uh, when we were doing that, we uh, brought in uh, several new contractors and they all went back to the, um, the original engineer design where they felt that uh, it needed a two stage uh, units up there. Um, uh, a 5 ton and a 3 ton unit for each floor where uh, 1 would come on and if we couldn't uh, keep up the, the, the 2nd stage would kick on um, and. Um, um, for some reason, they all thought that uh, that was really necessary. Um, I personally, you know, I don't know too much about these, but it felt to me it was, um, it was over-engineered, but um, all of the contractors that came in felt that that was the right thing to do. Um, therefore, uh, we needed uh, four condensers, two for each floor. One of them is, uh, comes on, on a, as a second stage when the first one can't keep up. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, I, it, it appears that there are too many. Um, the other thing is, um, I thought, well, okay, given this, the, the height of these, are they going to be, I mean, I know 
um, condensing units these days, the efficient ones, the quiet ones are much taller. Um, right. Are these going to be really loud? I can't they're imagine not what going... all four of these is going to sound like. Yeah, um, they're actually not that loud. Uh, they are uh, high efficiency units, but they are especially made for uh, very low applications uh, as we need them. So they were actually specially ordered at, um, you know, at the, the, the regular ones um, were quite a bit bigger and we knew that we couldn't mm -hmm. fit anything that was going to be taller, and especially if it was going to be above the windowsill. So um, one of the design criteria of getting these, the uh, new HVAC units was uh, whether we could fit um, a low, um, uh, condensing units outside, and um, uh, these uh, were the only ones that were that would meet all the criteria, uh, and they're <clears throat> 27 inches high. The other thing I remember discussing early on um, was was maybe screening these so that there's two layers, like you have the decorative guardrail mm -hmm. on the outside, and then another maybe more solid uh, screening so that the, so you wouldn't be able to see them at all. You'd just basically be, you know, have a backdrop behind the mm -hmm. decorative railing of, of like a, a board fence, essentially. Sure. Something just, just enough to hide it. And we would be happy to do that. We can, we can certainly um, uh, do that if, if you think it would, it would be better. Um, we felt that that was something we could always add, um, but uh, if we proposed it, it was it would be difficult to subtract. So really, it, it really uh, to us, um, uh, it's important to make sure um, for uh, our heating and air conditioning system to have these. Uh, but we would uh, happy to to do anything that would uh, camouflage them as much as possible. Okay. And and also, I think the location of those, you know, the um, the lines or the, you know, the, the fake looking downspouts mm -hmm. might instead of, you know, compressing them in between the windows, maybe they could be further apart so they look more realistic. I'm and sure maybe more. on the outside of the windows, uh, one on each side, yeah. so it would be further. Because you would never outside. put leaders like in the middle, like right next to each other. Um, yeah, good, just good thought, point. Anyway. Yeah. So um, anyway, those are the only comments I have, and um, I did not receive any letters in favor of this application. I did not receive any letters uh, opposed to the application, so the hearing is closed. Thanks, Roman. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is Isaac Rowe, 620 Greenfield Hill Road in Fairfield, for property located at 620 Greenfield Hill Road in Fairfield um, for a new addition, B, replace windows, doors, shutter and roof, C, replace enlarged driveway, D, replace front entry walk, E, new site walls and terraces, F, new dormers, G, new exterior light fixtures. Hi, Adam. Can yes. you hear me? All right. It's yes, Dave Lane, you, architect, uh, representing Isaac Rowe for 620 Greenfield Hill Road. Um, I'm going to walk you through the site plan first, and then I can uh, everything else. Um, the okay. existing house yeah, was built in 1982 for the handbook. It is a design. Uh, what we're planning to do is add an addition to the south, which is uh, about uh, 11 foot 6 by 20 foot 6, and an addition to the north, which is about 10 feet by 24 feet all in the style of the existing residence. We're going to do a new art barn in the back and a connector right here, which, which connects the two buildings. Uh, in addition to that, we want to repave the driveway right now. It is a stone, a gravel with a Belgian block edge. We want to make it an asphalt driveway with a metal edge. We want to, there's some uh, patios in the back. The previous owner had some trees and stuff and had worked the patio around the trees. The trees are no longer there, so we want to redo the patio in the back. Uh, we have a flood line that comes through the, the property right here, which has kind of um, given us some, some setback issues for to create where we wanted to add our additions. 
So we're trying to keep tight to the house because of the flood lines, um, but, but that's the general, general feel there. Um, my next drawing, if I get out of that, I'll show you the plan. All right. So here's the existing house on this side. Uh, it's um, basically a U-shaped house. Again, the patio is on the back that, that we would be removing. There's uh, some steps down to some windows that uh, go into the basement. Silco door over here. And then the driveway is here with two-car garage. We'll keep the two-car garage, keep the U-shape, but we're adding a new enlarged master bath, uh, his and hers, which they have currently. But we want to enlarge those and give them more closet space. Right now they have a, a single closet. I, I believe when the previous owner uh, did some renovations, they added a stair to the basement. So they took away all their closets of when uh, the rows bought the house, they, they need more master closet space, so we added some more closet space here. On the opposite side, uh, we've added a bigger mudroom. They have two young children, so they wanted more, more mudroom space. And then in the back, we've created this art barn, which um, is basically an art room, powder room, little wet bar, a gym on the second floor, and, and a big storage closet for, for some uh, athletic uh, gear that they have. Um, new new uh, terrace across the back and a covered porch on the first floor. Second floor, the, the U-shape stays the same, but what we wanted to do was take advantage of some of the attic space that we have here. Once we add our addition to the north, we want to add some dormers, create a little playroom for the two children, and an office for Isaac on the second floor up inside the roof. So we've added these four dormers. Basically, the rest of the house, the, the form stays the same except for new attic space in the new addition to the south. Second floor of the, the barn portion is a gym and then open to below. Uh, lower level, I don't think you'd be too concerned with, but we are taking an office and gym and uh, wrapping room and turning it into a bedroom suite and a playroom and moving the laundry to the basement. No basement underneath the, the art barn. Elevation-wise, uh, this is the existing house. The idea is to, to really match the two additions that we're doing on the, the main house to the existing house. So keeping the same roofing, keeping the same stucco siding, Wood, we're going to replace all the windows. Right now, they're, it was built in 82, but the, the rows have lived there since uh, 2016, and the, they really don't like the windows. They're too drafty right now, so we're just going to update the windows with, with new SDL casement windows uh, throughout the house in the same spots and the same general uh, size that they are right now, at least on the front elevation. Uh, our two uh, additions, which would be right here and right here, Keeping in, in scale with the rest of the house, this is our one uh, dormer into the, the second floor or to the attic space, that's the current attic space that we're creating, the, the new office. We're also, right now there's an existing uh, wall that creates a little courtyard at the front door. We'd like to extend that out a couple feet to give a little bit more space to that little courtyard. So it generally takes in the same same zone, but we've increased it, uh, pushed it out towards the driveway a couple feet. So this is showing the, the front door and the windows without the, the courtyard wall there. The side elevation, this is the existing east elevation. This is the proposed east elevation. So we're adding our, our uh, 12 foot by, or 11, 6 by 20 foot 6 uh, master bathrooms on this portion, matching the pitches of the roofs. And then this is our new barn in the back that's connected by a glass walkway uh, and um, kind of bridging the two structures. The back building, the new back building, we're, we're going to match the roof, but it will have fieldstone chimney. It'll be, uh, we're going to have vertical shiplap boards. 
and a field stone base on it. So it's more like a an old barn that was on the property before that we're, we're just connecting up is the concept there. Rear elevation, the existing elevation is above, proposed is below. So what we wanted to do was, uh, particularly on the first floor, uh, gang the windows a little more to get more light into the, the living room, dining room is behind here. So we wanted to, to accentuate the light in down below, add uh, French doors into the library, more light into the kitchen, and these, again, are the dormers that we would be adding to create that new playroom on the second floor. Uh, the proposed north barn elevation below is just back further, so this is showing, looking out towards the woods in the back, the uh, array of glass that, that looks out to the back with, again, the fieldstone chimney, um, and a little uh, a wood a covered porch with a flat roof on it. The last elevation is the west elevation. Uh, new garage doors in the in similar style to the existing. Our new addition will go right here, which is our 10 foot by 24 foot addition. And then again, our glass, our glass connector and our barn piece with the fieldstone base and fieldstone chimney. These are pictures of the existing house up above. This is our neighbor to the left, and our neighbor to the right is this one, I believe. This one. Uh, and then these are across the street, this one and this one. Any questions? Thanks, Jay. Um, Mark, do you would you like to start? Um, no, thank you. No questions, Adam. All right. I think we lost you on the last application, didn't we? Um, you I, I could hear everything. It just, I lost my, uh, my audio, but I could hear Bama and everything he said. I apologize that I, I didn't hit the mute. Oh, couldn't sorry. get the mute off in time. I was trying to screw around with the, you know, with my uh, oh. laptop here, but I could hear everything. All I right, apologize. Sorry. Um, Darren. So I just have one quick question. Actually, it's great that you're on A4. So it looks like you're replacing the front door as well? Correct. Okay, and then pushing those walls in front of the front door outward, um, you're not changing the gate that's there or anything, are you? Correct, the gate is staying the same as are the two iron rails in front of the windows that were previously, um, that okay. are on that existing house. So then the only thing changing there is the front door? Yeah, we're we're replacing the windows, but the design-wise, the only thing that's changing is the front door. Right now, it's a single door with side lights, and we're changing it to a double double French door. Okay, and yeah. um, it looks like on those the wall in front of the front door, it looks like there's two kind of lantern lights. Those are going on the house next on on either side of the front door now. Correct. Yep. Okay, and I'm sorry, I might have just missed it. Did you bring specs for those, or is that a later application? Yes, no, those are those are attached. They were attached to it, but it's in a different file. Oh, okay. All right, no problem. Thank you. It's a it's a Bivolo. There it is. Okay. So it's a Bivolo copper light, and that'll be typical through the whole house. Uh, we'll just scale it down. I think we have 18s on the front on either side of the door, and then we have tens on the garage because it's a little, a bit tighter. And those are similar to what's there now? Um, I don't think they're copper. Let me go back and I get out and... Sorry, you might have said all this and I might have just missed it. That's what's there now. Oh, okay. So they're in the same zone. They're not yeah. matching them exactly. Okay. 
And then those lights won't be there at all once you move that wall they out. Won't. Okay. Correct. We're just pulling it out a couple feet because right now it's a little tight in that courtyard. Yeah. So we wanted to give them a little, give it a little breath. Okay. Wonderful. That's all my questions. Thank you so much. Sure. Chris. Hi, um, Jay. Thanks for your presentation. Hey, How are you? I haven't, it's been a long time since uh, we've seen you here at the, no. at the HDC. So welcome back. Um, I had a couple of questions. I I didn't see any um, any cut sheets on for the windows um, or doors. Yeah, we haven't decided exactly exactly what type of window or door or the windows we're going to use yet. Right now they they installed. I think they're Marvins there now, but we're going to do an SDL type window. We just haven't decided exactly which one because he really doesn't like the windows now. So we're going to have to find one that. Uh, it's our price point, but also is is uh, more more efficient than the ones that he's got now. He just thinks that the the ones that he has now just let the air through, and he is not happy. Okay. So, um, but we're gonna. The idea is to match them as with SDL. And then, on the site plan, it looks like there's a couple of condensers located, but they're not called out. And I don't see any any um, information on those as well. Correct. Right now, there's um, I can zoom in a little. There's a couple existing. These two are existing on the uh, the south side, and there is right. one existing on the north side. So what we're doing is we're supplementing because we're going to have. Uh, adding that space on the second floor. So we're supplementing with one more on the, the north side. And then back here for the, the proposed uh, art barn, we're putting one more in the back. And we're going to screen them all with, with planting. So we, if you look at the pictures, which I'll get back to unless you have more site plan questions, but um, they're right up there right now, these, these two on the, on the outside. So we'd like to really screen them anyway because they're they're right in the middle. I mean, you can see them from the street. So we'd like to get those hidden a bit. Yeah, the um the two the two on the north side um these two we'd like to screen that whole story. Whole seems like they would be visible from um Yeah. From, yeah. Uh, they, they would be as you look down the driveway. So we'd yeah. like to screen those as well. With um, and I think it's, I love the fact that you're getting rid of that Belgian block curbing that's kind of in disrepair. So that's, that's good. And you yeah. said you're going to do metal edging. Um, it's not in yeah. the application, but um, you mentioned that in your presentation. I think we put it on, I, yeah, I didn't put it on the, on the list, but it's on the drawing. Okay, great. Um, those were my only questions. Thanks, Jay. You're welcome. Jim, do you have any questions? Questions, thank you. Okay, Alyssa, do you have any questions? I do, thanks. Um, that new addition in the back that you're referring to as the art barn, um, I noticed that it has um, different um, paneling, the vertical paneling. Is there going to be anything else to distinguish it as a barn? In what way? I, I don't know. It, it, are you putting in different windows or different doors from the original house, or is it otherwise going to be um, similar? Well, yeah, because that, the main house is stucco and it's, the, the window sizes are a bit smaller. What we did was the, the windows on the barn itself are kind of larger and almost more square than some of the more vertical uh, ones on the on the main house, as you could kind of see between here and here. So it'll we look go more with like a barn. Hunk, but Pardon me? So it'll look more like a barn than just the difference in, in the size. Yeah, yeah, with the trim and the fieldstone base and the, the little brackets that we've got on the bar on the on the gable ends and the the flat roofed porch with the with the wood columns on it. I think that we're detailing it so that it really feels like a different building. Okay. That was my question. Thank you. 
Um, I do not have any questions, Jay. I think it's a good proposal. Um, I did not receive any letters in favor of this application. I did not receive any letters opposed to this application. So uh, the hearing is closed. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Uh, next item on the agenda is Melvin Hill, 1020 Old Post Road in Fairfield for property located at 1020 Old Post Road in Fairfield. Um, Melvin has you have two applications, which I think we'll just hear them both together since uh, one Perfect. of them was pending ZBA, ZBA approval um, and, um, and you received ZBA approval. Um, so the items are A, remove roof and install second story on garage, B, add new dormers, C, new wood windows, D, new wood garage door, E, repair existing uh, shingles, and add new cedar shingles, uh, new asphalt roof. Um, and then the next application was A, remove asphalt path and replace with Boston brick pavers, B, install thin brick veneer over front facing portion of something that's not on there. Um, C, install bluestone over front porch concrete slab. All right. Can you hear us okay? Yes. Okay, great. So, hi, I am Lamise, and this is my husband, Melvin, and we're here to talk about our home at 1020 Old Post Road. The last time we presented to you all was March of 2020, and since then, we put in a lot of work trying to bring some life back into our home, and now we're looking to do phase two mm -hmm. of the story. So, uh, as you called out, we are looking to seek approval on both our detached garage and our walkway and front porch. So, unless there's any objection, we'll start with the garage and then move on from there. If that's okay. 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 So, this is a view from Old Post Road of the garage as indicated by the red arrow. Uh, zooming in, here are some samplings of the current state of the garage. We have both the north and west elevations here. We have three sides that are visible to the public, which we've showed here, but certainly can also show the fourth side if need be. Overall, what we're looking to do is restore this rundown garage and add in a second story in such a way that it mimics the main house. So first we'd like to propose that we remove the roof to install a second story garage. And this would increase the structure height from 15 to 22 feet. We'd like to then install new asphalt roof to match the roof on the main house. So if you need us to go back to the picture of the main house, we can show an example of what that looks like. We'd also like to prepare or repair where possible the existing cedar shingles and where we can't replace them with new cedar shingles that match when necessary. And then on each side here, you can see on the south elevation, we are looking to one, install new wood panel garage doors here and here, um, which would match the existing garage doors. And then we are looking to install two new wood pillow windows right here. Um, and then moving on to the west elevation, we'd be looking to add two new dormers with wood pillow windows in each. And then the north side, we are looking to install one new pillow window. On the east elevation, we don't have it pictured here because it's not uh, visible to the public, but we'd be looking to add one new dormer and one wood pillow window. I will pause and open up to questions. Or, or should we just go on with the, with the uh, porch and the, uh, oh, just, and the wall? Let's go, go through the whole application, like the two, two different applications, and we'll go just we can go around once. Okay. 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 Um, so here we can see the, the front of the house from Old Post Road. We're focusing on this asphalt walkway that leads up to the house as well as this 
western side walkway on the side, and this is the, the concrete porch that we're talking about. Um, just to zoom in, uh, you can see both the front side as well as the side asphalt walkways. Both of them are in deteriorating condition. And then this is a sample of the concrete slab on the front porch that we're looking to address. Specifically, what we'd like to do is remove the asphalt walkways both from the front of the house to the property line along Old Post Road and then along the western side of the house. We'd be looking to replace the asphalt walkways with Boston brick pavers. And then looking to cover this uh, front facing side of the front porch with brick veneers that would match the existing bricks along the foundation of the house. And then the top side of the concrete lab we'd be looking to cover with bluestone. Those are our proposals. We'll open it up to questions now. Okay, thank you. Uh, Alyssa, let's start. Uh, sure, thank you. Uh, I don't think I have any questions, though. Okay, Jim. Questions, thank you very much. Thank you. Chris. Thanks for your um, presentation. You did a great job. Um, very impressed. And I like the thank design. You. Very nice. Um, I had, um, let's see, I have a question. Um, bear with me for just a second. Oh yeah. Um, so it looks like is that driveway a shared driveway with your neighbor? It is a shared driveway. And so um, even though it's kind of in disrepair, that's not part of the application at this time. No. Uh, uh, yeah, we need to. We're we're in discussions with them about trying to figure out how we want to handle um, the repair of the driveway, but that's not in discussion right now. But it is definitely on the agenda. So I'm sure you'll be hearing back from us um, later on this year. Okay. Um, and then the the brick paved um, walkway that you're proposing is that going to be set in in cement or in stone dust? It will be in stone dust. Okay. Um, those were my two questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Art. Uh, none, Adam. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Darren. No questions. Thank you. Okay, and uh, Melvin, I don't not have any questions. Uh, I think it looks like a good proposal. Um, I did not receive any letters in favor of this application. Did not receive any letters opposing this application. So the hearing is closed. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda. I am recusing myself. Uh, Chris, would you can you read the, or would you like me to read the? Uh, application. Uh, I can read the application. Um, okay, great. So it's um, Alex and DD DeCalise, 104 Old South Road in Southport, or property located at 104 Old South Road in Southport. Item A, location of skylight. Item B, remove uh, I'm sorry, window type casement with cross rail and item C shutter location. And okay, so hi, uh, my name is uh, Steve Keedle. I'm an architect and I'm here uh, representing Alex and Didi Di Calice. And I'm going to share my screen if I can. Let's see. Um, oh, hold on. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to start with the windows, if I may, and um, there are three windows on the back of the house. These had been discussed previously. Um, the discussion had that they were previously picture windows, uh, fixed picture windows, um, and we had talked about uh, making them fixed uh, casement windows with a cross rail. 
uh, one of the questions came up in previous discussions was what is the material uh, and the type of window. Now, in light of much discussion, um, one of the requests uh, that came through the application was the proof of the purchase for windows. Um, and what we looked at and in speaking with the owner um, was actually changing these windows to the double hung, which was a suggestion um, in a previous discussion. So if I can, um, what we'd like to do um, instead of using the casement with the cross rail is to go back to um, a, just the Pella Reserve, the traditional double hung, it's the same size as what is um, there now uh, adjacent to the three windows. Um, the owner has actually purchased these. Um, they are primed. Um, they look, uh, again, much more traditional. Um, they match the window that is to the left and the right. Uh, so where my cursor is, it's going to match this window here, as opposed to the um, the casement window. Now, this picture is actually a picture of what is there now. And they uh, had taken the, the picture window and added this cross rail. But really, in, in light of what's required and what we, we, we discussed, uh, we do feel that the double hung is appropriate. And uh, again, if we can, um, we would like to look at this um, as the, the double hung as opposed to the uh, the casement that we had requested in the uh, the application. Okay, and then the um, if I can go to part A, which is I'll go to this picture here. Um, this is the existing conditions um, with the skylight installed, and some of you may have been part of this discussion um, almost a year ago, I think, at this point. Um, the the number of skylights. This particular skylight uh, was approved previously. The model make and number had been submitted and had been approved uh, perhaps a year ago. Um, and um, inadvertently, uh, the owner had added uh, skylights and we had gone back to HDC for um, uh, approval for that, of which it was denied and then really ended up coming down to just the one skylight. Um, and that skylight was one of a four, um, but the previous, there had been, if I can see my cursor next to this chimney, there had been an old scuttle at some point that may have accessed the roof, or maybe it was an old cistern uh, that at some point had been turned into a, um, a wire type window. Um, Alex had gone to HTC and had gotten the one skylight approved, um, but um, as we understood that the actual location uh, may have been different, and so as Alex was looking at um, doing repair work in the attic and structural with the two chimneys, um, the layout upstairs, um, this location is, in our opinion, the best location. It also is the most uh, discreet um, that we could think of um, on that elevation. And then lastly, um, I can, let's see. So in the packet, um, I had a picture of, uh, so again, that's the skylight. Again, it's a little clearer in my pictures, I think, that I presented than, the, than this uh, facsimile of the photo. And then this picture shows, I think it's the uh, north side, um, where, again, there was discussion um, and a bit of miscommunication in terms of the appropriate location of the shutters. Um, the shutters were in this location, um, on the casing or on the siding when Alex purchased the house, um, there were repairs done and then he put them back um, in his best understanding of where they should go and have been screwed and painted. Uh, and we actually thought they were, had been approved um, uh, in that location, but it came to a little further communication about where, you know, what is the appropriate location to shut it in a historic home. And you can see, um, go to this picture. This is a picture of the front of the house. Um, again, the shutters have been installed. Um, and actually kind of unique up at the top here where you have this window and these sort of faux shutters, if you will, um, that are, I guess, more decorative. Um, but again, you can see where the shutters sit relative to the casing and the, uh, the upper head casing. Um, so what we would like to do is, A, have a discussion about where these shutters are located um, on the window, are they appropriate? Um, and if not, then we are looking for a bit of guidance um, from from HDC um, in terms of, you know, do we need to change them? Are they required to be changed? 
Um, and again, the owner is uh, prepared to do so. Uh, but we do feel like there was a little bit of miscommunication in terms of understanding of the appropriate location. And again, I'm here to uh, present this really uh, in good faith, um, looking at the outside, not knowing all of the discussions that have happened previously to me coming on board. Um, the owner um, would prefer to leave them like this. Um, but again, if, if the HDC feels differently um, to affix the shutters, um, uh, as, to appear as if they operate, then uh, we're going to do that. Um, but really this, this meeting is we would like to um, try and get closure on these items. Um, this house has been under um, discussion and we've presented a few things as well as Alex has presented a few things over the past several uh, years, I believe. Um, so in, really in review, um, again, it's the location of the shutters and position of the shutters. Um, the um, location of the skylight, and again, keep in mind that skylight model and make and size was approved. Um, it's really just, we it did not get appropriate uh, approval, I guess, um, in terms of its location. And again, we do feel that the location is quite discreet. Um, and then lastly is the um, the window, the three windows, uh, sorry, uh, let's see how I get that in. The three windows that are on the back. Um, again, we had had a discussion about the appropriateness of a fixed picture. We discussed having a cross rail, um, but again, in, in light of all the discussion, um, the owner um, has purchased three double hung that match the one on the left. Um, now, the other thing, the reason why it was a fixed casement or a fixed picture originally, it is on a clear story space. So the operation of it um, is kind of null and void because you can't open the windows. But from the exterior, again, we feel that, that the double hung is, is probably more in keeping with the, uh, the rest of the windows. Uh, if I can zoom out a little bit. Uh, so the window on the left uh, and uh, the Sorry, um, and that window on the right. Um, let me see if I can move that over a little bit. And that window on the uh, on the right. So that these three windows would be changed out. Um, again, I did not submit the purchase order yet because again, I wanted this to play out in discussion um, over the last few days. But again, I, I think that uh, the owner and I, and I, I think we do feel that the double hung would be more historically appropriate. Uh, so with that, if you have any questions, um, I'm happy to answer anything. Uh, thank you very much, Steve. Um, okay, again, Adam is uh, recused on this uh, application. Darren, do you have any questions? No, I don't, thank you very much. Alyssa? I do not have any questions, thanks. Art? Yes, uh, I don't have any questions, just an observation. Um, we've, we've been going back and forth on this property uh, for quite some time. I'm glad progress is made, but you know, to Steve, I, I just wanted to make the point that perhaps, uh, and I know Alex has been here uh, in the past presenting, um, it just seems like we have an, an inordinate amount of miscommunication uh, with this property uh, and the HDC, um, and you know, at times it seems like they they're inclined to ask more for forgiveness than approval. Um, so, uh, and I know that uh, I, I know that your uh, clients uh, a little bit socially, they're intelligent, competent people, and I think they mean well. But I just think I just encourage them, uh, you know, if their schedules permit, to come to these hearings. So, um, because uh, your presentations are clear. Um, but I think we could save time and, and um, resolve this matter more efficiently if um, in, instead of them uh, thinking they heard what they heard, that they um, attend the hearing so that um, we can uh, make clearer lines of communication. Because um, just listening to this for quite some time now, um, it just this more than any other um, you know matter seems to uh, get lost in the sauce. So. Uh, I just wanted to pass that on because uh, I think uh, I think we can all do a little better on this. Yeah, okay. no, I, I think I think if I may just address that, I, I do think that um, the communication here has has been um, a little bit lacking, and um, 
the reason that they hired me to help them is I think they um, just just felt a little bit um, I don't know I don't know the right word but somewhat browbeaten I think and they they have had um, some private discussions with some members of HDC I out on site to, 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 to get oh. to get some clarity. Um, but I, 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 your point is well made, and uh, again, communication, which as I have found, is it, it would be um, if there had been a question about something, it could have been clarified um, and really not be in this position that we find ourselves in. So I thank you for that, uh, though, for that. Uh, yeah, and and point. it just it just it comes across like you're their apologist, um, and you your presentations are clear and um, your ideas are good, but um, this is this is taking too long, and frankly. It's cost them a ton of money. So uh, again, um, I, I think they should be they, sh they should be here to hear uh, the HDC's comments firsthand. If if you're looking for guidance and, and you're looking for perspective, so they really should show up next time. All right. Well, I appreciate I appreciate that. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Art. Jim, do you have any comments? Yeah. Um, thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. Are there any dynamic shutters anywhere on the house? Uh, no, there are no functioning shutters. Um, again, that I think there may have been a couple uh, when they purchased the home. I don't know where they were located, um, but no, there are no functioning shutters. And if you look at, I think it, maybe I lost that image. Um, oh, here we go. So on this image, I hope you can see this. It looks like the the shutters on this door, um, albeit awkward architecturally because it covers the, the window, um, mm. does seem to be in a more super position for um, a, the appearance of a functional shutter. Um, but again, the windows are consistent. Um, I think this piece on the right was a new addition. Um, the, on the left is obviously the older piece, older part. Um, and no, but there are no. Um, really real functioning uh, shutters on the house other than those at the door. I checked the handbook and there's no prohibition against non-functioning shutters. I, I, I was frankly s surprised at that. Um, okay, th thank you very much. Thank you. No other questions. Thanks, Jim. Um, Steve, thank you for your presentation. Just a couple of uh, points of clarification uh, to help me a little bit. Um, so the the application, I don't believe, called for new double hung windows. Um, it, it did not. And, and so, again, I mean, this is windows. this is just to kind of follow that through. This is exactly what you know. Art was just talking about. Is it seems like there's a um, there's a tendency to kind of just go ahead and do things. Um, I mean, I, I think I heard you say that they had already ordered these windows. These they windows ordered the double windows. hung, correct. Yeah. And, yeah. And and some, some of the, so they're not, the, they haven't been approved yet. Um, so, so Chris, the, the, um, I think, you know, we had talked about the picture window originally, and then we talked about going to a, a casement with a cross rail, as you see in the, the picture. Um, and, you know, it has been a, a while, but I, I think um, they remember the discussion that we had, at least they, they may have followed it online, um, that uh, the double hung would be more appropriate for the house. Um, and, you know, they, they have been um, feeling somewhat pressured under certain things here, right, for whatever reason. And um, they they thought, okay, well, we can concede that, and we'll do the double hung. Now, again, um, but but to but just in fairness to the the commission, you know, yes. you're asking us to approve something different than you applied for. You you applied for casement windows with cross rails. I mean, yes, I'm looking at your application. So correct. But you're at what you're now. What you're asking us for is double hung windows. Well, I, let me put it this way. I mean, I, I think that in the the casement window that's there, 
um, is something that we had discussed at a previous meeting, and really the only question that had remained was, what is the material? And it was my error uh, thinking that that had been approved when I came back for some something else, saying just to to say, and I think I had said um, the windows are wood, but not knowing that I had to reapply for that. Uh, and that was a while back, obviously, but. In the meantime, um, again, they took to her the discussion about the types of windows. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they have ordered these double homes. They, they, again, the the casement with the cross rail, the, we're more than happy to, to leave them there, um, as it's shown in the picture, because that is what's currently there. Um, Again, the um, the thought process of of going to the double hung and and its wood and everything else um, uh, is something that the owner um, did, did take on their own. But again, I I think uh, whether it's the the cross rail or the or this double hung, um, okay. might be both appropriate. But the double hung is probably more appropriate just because of the nature of the adjacent windows. Okay, Steve. And, and just anyway. I want to I want to move along and. And you're okay. sharing your screen with a Pella Reserve traditional double hung window, but that's again not part of this application. This, I see. This is, so this is information that wasn't included in the application. So yeah, it's really so, it's not fair to ask the commissioners to um, to approve something that's not in the application. I, I don't think. Um, well, and I, I and, guess then. I and I, I want to just I, I think I made my point on that. So I just want to move on to a couple other things and then you can follow up if you'd like to. Okay. Um, just um, on item one in your application, which was the location of the skylight, if you could pull up that photograph of yes. that. Um, yeah. Uh, so um, that's not the location that was previously approved by the commission. So you're asking us to approve the location where it is now. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. That's that's all I needed on that one. And then um, your application that calls for the shutter location. Is it is it the shutters with respect to the location as they sit um, off of the casing? Um, because yes, that, that there, there are are there other if you go to the the photograph that shows the windows with the check rail uh -huh. um, or the large mullion to kind of simulate simulate the um, no on the other side of the house. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let me see. Right. Is that that's the picture? Uh, right here. This one. Yeah. So um, yes. the the windows um, to the to the right of those of that triple window on the main body of the home didn't those yes. have shutters on them as well? Um, they, as far as I know, uh, no, but I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. If they were because there originally, that, I don't know. Because that elevation kind of mimics the old south elevation with that gable, that attic gable window with the kind of, um, you know, the kind of shutter that's made out of millwork. Yes, correct. Um, okay. uh, yeah, I don't know the answer to that on that. If that window. Or those windows ever had shutters. Currently, there are shutters on the um, on the two street side as well as the driveway side. Um, let me see. I don't okay. have another picture there. Um, yeah, I, I don't know the answer to that, Chris. Whether they had uh, shutters on that elevation. Okay. Um, so I guess so. The shutters that are installed. The application is that that they be allowed to be as installed, which is not like that drawing. If you go back to that drawing that you just had, yes, correct, correct. So, th those so that show drawing shows the shutters kind of on the casing, so that when they close, correct. they would actually work. But the but correct. the way and they're installed, if you go to the picture, they're off the casing. Yep. 
so that the, when they close, there'd be a big, you know, one foot gap between the shutters. Correct. They, they uh, what I would say, truly decorative shutters, right? Um, right. As opposed to um, uh, have a the appearance that they could be closed. Correct. Okay. And to that point, actually, this elevation here, this the side elevation, um, this does not have shutters. Um, I'm not sure if it did. Um, ever, I'm not sure. Um, but I don't think there are shutters on there now. Um, let me see. Um, I don't see. Yeah, you can't really see on there, but here's my cursor. You can see there are no shutters on the on the right. elevation. Sorry for that picture. Um, so again, I'm not sure um, the the logic necessarily there, and it may be might be because of the proximity to the gutter. I'm not really sure, and I also don't know if there were shutters there originally. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So I just wanted to make sure back, you know, I so. understood what you were what you were requesting. Um, yeah, we're requesting to to maintain them in the position that they are in. Right. Um, but as you discuss this, if for some reason you think it would it's not appropriate, then the owner obviously is willing to take direction on that and and do so differently. Okay. Um, and then if I make me. if I make Chris just address that one question about the window in the back. Um, uh, again, we would like to bring some kind of closure to this. So. Um, you know, if uh, again, is 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 the double hung more appropriate? Well, it might be from the outside. And again, when we discussed it the first time about the use and utility from the inside, the the, the uh, casement with the cross set rail made some sense uh, from a practical standpoint. Um, so again, um, I'm not sure how to to uh, proceed with that particular issue. Um, uh, and again, maybe you could give some direction on that. And yeah, I think you already did, perhaps. So thank okay. you for that, Chris. Yeah, and and then you know, since you bring that up again, the the other issue I thought that we had with those three windows was not only the fact that they um, showed up as casement windows without a you know a simulated kind of a cross rail to make them look like a double hung. Um, I mean, they didn't show up with a cross rail, but the other, the other thing was, I believe they were a lot larger than what was approved for those locations. Yeah, there was there was actually a a, a number of issues with that, uh, Chris. That included uh, change in the roof line um, proportions, um, and we we had discussed that 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 had been approved um, in terms of that. Proportion because originally the original drawing, I think, had a much bigger skylight over there. Um, the, the roof, and I think, so I can go back to that um, image. Um, hold on, sorry. Um, where is that? Oh, uh, yeah, so in, in previous discussions, um, we had talked about um, the change in this roof line. There were, you can see, kind of here where my um, uh, hand is uh, on the screen. Yeah. Uh, the original drawing had a much larger skylight. Um, we went with the three. The proportions were a little bit different. We had discussed that. We also discussed uh, the size of the windows. Um, and those things had been addressed. And again, I think where we concluded with it was really just the type of windows. Uh, okay. Again, I'd have to look through my notes, but I do believe that that had been discussed and it really was more the conclusion of of okay, what is the material and the type of window? Okay, um, okay, thank you, Chris. All right, um, I I think that clears up my uh, questions. Any other commissioners have any anything else to add to this? I don't know. I think I called on everyone, but I just want to make sure. Okay, hearing none, um, I am under the impression that we. Um, and Adam, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I don't believe there was any uh, anything from the from the public in a, in opposition to this application, nor were there any um, any uh, letters that were um, in favor of the application. So uh, unless I have some here something from the contrary from Adam. I'm going to just say that this hearing uh, is, is now closed.
Thank you very much. All right, thank you. All right, thanks, Chris. <clears throat> uh, so let's move on to the consideration of public hearings. We'll start with uh, Carrie and Dan Wilson, 14 Willow Street in Southport for property located at 14 Willow Street in Southport for A, the installation of a swing set. Can I get a motion? Yeah, hi, it's Chris. I will make a motion to approve the application as presented um, with the stipulation that they move the uh, proposed swing set um, towards uh, Westway as, as far as they're able to without interfering with their existing garden. Okay, we have a second. I'll second it. Uh, Darren seconds. Discussion? Hey, Adam, could you just clarify who's who's voting on this application? Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Uh, it's Bohan is on this application. Got it. No discussion? Okay, all in favor? All opposed? No opposed. Any abstentions? No motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> Second item on the agenda, uh, Kevin Liniak, 72 Willow Street, Southport, for property located at 72 Willow Street in Southport for <clears throat> A, remove driveway gates, B, new opening and fence posts, C, new landing at garage door, E, new bluestone walkways, E, new lights, F, change previously approved patio, koi pond, G, relocate generator, and H, fire pit. Uh, can we get a... Motion, please. Yeah, uh, I'll make a motion to approve items A through H as presented with the stipulation that we remove uh, one of the pairs, one light at each walkway. So instead of six, there'd be three and that the lights okay shine um, towards the back of the property, not towards Old South. Second. I'll second that, Adam Hart. Hart seconds. Okay, discussion. <clears throat> okay, no discussion, and uh, this is... Um, Melissa, you're on this application, voting on this application. So all in favor? Um, any opposed? No opposed. Any abstentions? No abstentions. So the motion passes unanimously. Um, next item is Old <clears throat> South Road LLC, 171 Old South Road in Southport. And this is Jim Bohan, you're voting on this one. For lo property Thank located you. at 171 Old South Road in Southport for A, changes to previously approved windows, B, garage fireplace roof flue, C, garage condenser unit. We have a motion. Yeah, Chris here again. I'll make a motion to approve items A, B, and C as presented. Thank you. Second? I'll second. Second that. So Darren, second? Yes. Okay. Discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Art? All opposed? Okay. All opposed? Uh, none opposed. All abstentions? No abstentions. Uh, motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> the next item is Margaret and uh, Stephen Staunton, 560 Pequot Avenue in Southport for property located at 560 Pequot Avenue in Southport for A, additions to existing garage, B, new sidewalks, C, new patio, D, remove existing patio, E, change driveway, F, new lights. Can we get a motion? I'll make a motion I'll to make approve a motion to accept A through F as, oh, go ahead, Jim. That is uh, Jim Bohan is not voting on this one. It's Alyssa. Okay. 
Oh, sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Then I'll make, make a motion, motion to approve A through F as um, presented. Okay. Second. I'll second okay. that. Oh, crochet seconds. And any discussion? No discussion, all in favor? All opposed, none opposed. Any abstentions? No. Motion passes unanimously. And next item on the agenda is Gail Caruso, 561 Pequot Avenue in Southport for property located at 561 Pequot Avenue in Southport for A, railing, B, SCL doors and side lights, E, new patio, D, stoop, E, lanterns, and F, enclosed covered porch. Can I get a motion? Motion to approve as presented. Jim Bohan. Motions to approve as presented and a second. Art D second. Okay, Art seconds. Discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Jim, you're voting on this? Jim? Yes. yes. Okay. Opposed? Not opposed? Abstentions? No abstentions? Now the motion passes unanimously. Uh, next item on the agenda is Jill Vergara, 271 Old Post Road in Fairfield for property located at 271 Old Post Road in Fairfield to A, replace existing picket fence with six foot high picket fence and B, new four foot high picket fence. Can I get a motion? I'll make a motion to accept A and B as presented. Okay. Um, second. Art seconds. Discussion. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm not comfortable um, approving this application without some drawings of the actual fencing and um, a little bit more better description of what they're actually proposing to do. There, um, there's gates that are going to be installed. We don't we don't have anything on that, and um, in light of the prominent location of of this fencing, I think it's important that we get uh, drawings that actually depict what we're approving. Um, so that's I would I would not support this motion. I would agree. I think the the application is a little thin. Um, if, it, if it at least had pictures of what they're proposing, um, I'd feel more comfortable with it. But. Um, I have a question they, too about the height of the fence. Um, yeah. They they want to have a four foot fence across the front oh, of the house. Sorry, Alyssa. She said it was. Yeah. Can you hear me? Never mind. Yep. Go ahead. Okay. Um, they wanted to have a four foot fence across the front of the house, as well as a six foot fence on the side, plus the three foot picket fence. Um, is there yeah. a way that we can stipulate now that when they come back that we sh they should have you know, just the same level fence all the way around so it's six foot and six foot. We make that recommendation. Um, I, well, yes and no. I mean, uh, I think they need to come back with it with a, just a clear application. Um, okay. And the heights, I think we, I mentioned the heights and I think they were, you know, she, she was um, fine with making them the same height. I think three different fence heights would be, a, would be, um, you know, inappropriate. So, mm -hmm. be a little bit of mess. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, Jill. It's a, this is a closed session, so you can't speak. Unfortunately, public public hearings over. 
Um, okay, so any other comments? Okay, um, so let's vote on it. Any all, all in favor of this motion? Okay, all opposed? Abstentions, no abstentions. So the motion fails four to one. Parker Dennis is uh, approved. Um, so we need another motion on the table. Adam, I apologize. I, I, I was in favor of uh, what Chris said. I, I, I thought we were voting in oh, favor okay. of it tonight without prejudice. So that my mistake, my apologies. Now you have an okay. opportunity okay. to make a motion, Art. <laughs> <laughs> Um, motion to deny all items without prejudice. Second. I'll second that. Darren seconds. And I guess per discussion, so all in favor? All opposed? None opposed? Abstentions? No abstentions? The motion passes unanimously. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Pequot Yacht Club. 647 Harbor Road in Southport for property located at 647 Harbor Road in Southport for A, replace existing guardrail, B, new condenser units. I'll Good make motion. a motion to deny this application without prejudice for the reasons I stated earlier. And um, in addition to that, we didn't have any cut sheets on, on the mechanical equipment. And I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to have more information about the the actual condensers. I'd like to see the. Well, I'm sorry. I shouldn't do this. Wait till if my motion gets seconded before okay. I can say anything. Sorry. Okay. Second. I'll second that. Okay. So seconds for, for discussion. I just discussion. Um, I wanted to just get more information on the condensers. Um, I I liked. Uh, the idea of putting kind of a screen between the guardrail and the condensers to kind of, you know, give another little buffer so that they wouldn't be visible. Um, that was Adam's idea. And then um, I also think that their application should indicate the copper <laughs> leaders that they're proposing to um, hide the line sets. I agree. It was all I think. Uh, I also think that there might be too many condensing units. I mean, they they should have that. They should re um, take another look at that because four condensing units for that building just seems like a lot. You know? Yeah, and that and it was um, it was actually sixteen tons, two five tons and two three ton units. Definitely, um, yeah. an engineer is involved in that and. Um, it could, be value, it could be value. It's not that big of a building. I would suspect it's you not that big of a building. Down. <laughs> yeah. It's too much sort of firepower to it's over overkill in terms of uh, uh, heat cooling the the space. Well, I'm I'm actually not seems um, like qualified to make that statement, but in my experience, it seems like there might be a little bit more there than what would be normally. Um, Necessary. Chris, in terms yeah, of typically. Go ahead. Oh, I thank you for that answer. I, I, that's what I wanted to ask. Following up on the screening issue, um, would would it be? I don't know. If this is this would help, but would it, would it something like to get more between the condenser and the railing? Do some kind of natural screening, like. Well, I mean, okay. I, I think that that would be tough to maintain um, because there's really no access to that uh, without getting on a ladder. So I think, you know, you could come up with some sort of a, um, a wooden kind of a barrier between the guardrail and the conductors to, to kind of, um, you know, ma mask the um, to screen the units without having to deal with vegetation up there. Okay, so you're saying to, to kind of like 
so so they're not peeking through and you could see them through the the railing right yeah i mean we're supposed to we're su we're supposed to hide condensing units from sight of a public way with you know with evergreen screening is what we're what we should do but when we can't do that sometimes we use some sort of fencing material you know if you look at like the old post road i'm sorry the um the old town hall there's a big huge generator right below where we um, meet when we used to meet and they've used um fencing like um nice fencing mm -hmm. material to to kind of hide that from view of a public way okay all right thank you well, we'd have to consider what type of screening screener we would use because it could affect the look of that building. I mean, I know, I know that's the question anyway, by putting those condensing units there, but no matter what goes there, it's going to affect the look of the front of that building. So that's sort of an important yeah. question because if, if a possible solution is screening, then we got to, we should decide in advance what kind of screening that will be. Other than them coming back and saying, well, it doesn't, it, it's going to affect the, uh, the look of the building. So, um, hopefully they're listening, but, uh, you know, maybe, maybe we should get some sense of what would be appropriate. So they don't come back and it gets, uh, for, for, for the purposes affecting the looks, right. In retrospect, uh, I don't, and perhaps I should have asked it. Um. Is the previous air conditioning, it, it, you know, the in ground down by the docks, was that inadequate? I didn't hear that. Address. There's no air conditioning now. There's no air, air, There's no air, air conditioning now at all. I no. thought there was some. Oh, okay. Thank you. I know they've looked I mean, into one this thing for a long, long time. So, I, you know, in terms of the location, is that the most optimal location? They're probably Bauman's probably right in terms of that's that's the only spot it'll go. That's uh, just my two cents. I mean, one thing to consider is maybe um, we approve the, the guardrail and have them mock up what the condensers are going to look like at a later date. You know, I mean, I think it, this is something that warrants maybe a, a you know a, a field visit and a mock up. Um, it's a good idea. I would agree a site visit it, would be great. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if we want to um, Chrissy, consider um, revising your uh, motion to to include so, so that the, the guardrail can be changed so that it matches the other one that we've approved. I don't know how you feel about that. And just tonight, the condensers. Yeah, um, I I could withdraw my motion and and put a new motion forward, or we could amend mine. Um, whatever. I think just do. just amend it is fine. Okay, so I'll make a friendly amendment to my motion to approve the proposed guardrail as submitted, and to deny the condensers. Um, without prejudice and that we would like to see a mock-up of the condensers and the um, proposed line set screening before the next application is um, submitted. Maybe that goes into Makes discussion. Sense. I'll second that. Okay. Sounds good. And Jim seconds, okay. All right, ready to vote. All in favor? All opposed, none opposed. Any abstentions, no abstentions. So the motion passes unanimously. Uh, next item on the agenda is Isaac Row, 620 Greenfield Hill Road in Fairfield, the property located at 620 Greenfield Hill Road in Fairfield for A, a new addition, replace windows, doors, shutter, and roof. C, replace enlarged driveway. D, replace front entry walk. E, new site walls and terraces. F, new dormers. G, new exterior light fixtures. 
Making a motion. This is yours, right? This is Alyssa. Anyone want to make a motion on this one? Yeah, I'll make a motion to um, accept as presented. Okay, approve as presented. Second? Art will second it. Art seconds. Discussion? I think it's a good proposal myself. Um, Anyone else? All right. Um, all in favor? All opposed? Chrissy, you voting? Any abstentions? Yeah, I, I had I had uh, muted myself. I was just under discussion. I was only going to say that we should stipulate oh. um, that we have. Um, Evergreen screening around the condensers, which which isn't shown on the application, and the condensers are indicated on there. Okay. Melissa, are you okay to amend your motion to stipulate the yes, I'll evergreen plantings? Yes. Stipulate. Yeah. Whatever Chris does. Okay. And Art, you're you're you still second that? Okay. Okay. Now we can vote. All in favor? Okay. All opposed? Not opposed. All abstentions. No abstentions. And the motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> uh, the next item is uh, Melvin Hill, 1020 Old Post Road in Fairfield for property located at 1020 Old Post Road in Fairfield for A, remove roof and install a second story garage, B, new dorm, have new dormers, C, New wood windows, D, new wood garage door, E, repair existing shingles and add new cedar shingles and F, new asphalt roof. Can I get a motion? Make a motion to approve yes. as presented. Jim Bohan motions to approve as presented. And do we have a second? I'll second that. And Darren. Seconds discussion. The, uh, the only thing I would say, and this is more kind of for the applicants, is that uh, the application didn't include any exterior lighting or um, yep, yep. Sh show any condensers or anything. So those would need to be applied for before they, you know, before they were <laughs> right. installed. But other than that, I thought the application was good. Okay. okay. All right, all in favor? All opposed? No opposed? Any abstentions? None? Motion passes unanimously. Um, next application is Melvin Hill, 1020 Old Post Road in Fairfield for property located at 1020 Old Post Road in Fairfield to A, remove asphalt path and replace with Boston brick pavers. B, install thin brick veneer over front facing portion of porch. C, install bluestone or front porch concrete slab. And this is uh, Alyssa's voting on this application. We have a motion. Make a motion, Adam, to approve those items as presented. Thank you, Or. Second. I'll second. Alyssa seconds. Discussion? All right, no discussion. All in favor? All opposed? None opposed? Any abstentions? No abstentions. So the motion passes unanimously. And the final application is 104 of South, and I'll recuse myself and give it to Chris. Okay, um, so this is Alex and Dee Dee, Dee Police. Um, item number, I'm sorry, uh, 104 Old South Road in Southport. Item number one, location of Skylight. 
item number two, window type casement with cross rail, and item number three, shutter location. So is there a motion? I'll make a motion uh, to uh, deny uh, items one and two without prejudice uh, and to approve item three as presented. Okay, is there a second for that motion? I'll second that. Oh, and I didn't ask who's voting on this. Uh, I guess actually I since, since I voted um, on the last one, so I think it's Jim. Uh, actually, two Thank alternates you. are voting because um, Adam is, is oh, okay. confused. So I'm just not sure Thank which you. alternates. I guess we only have two, so you're all voting. Yep. That was easy. Um, okay, so um, just to restate, the motion was to to deny items one and two, and to without prejudice, without prejudice and to approve item three as presented. Uh, and um, is there any discussion on that? Yeah, I have a question. If we deny um, item, which one? Uh, the, the the location of a skylight. Um, how far off did is the location of the skylight now from where the, the commission approved it last year? And if we deny it, then what happens? They have to like put a whole new skylight in. They uh, they would they would either have I believe they would either have to um, put the skylight where it was approved or remove the skylight. Okay, from the drawing, it looks like it looks to me like it was only a foot or two off. Am I missing something on that? Yeah, you'd have to go to the previous application that was approved, not, okay. not the one that was presented. I see. Okay. And does anybody know what month they proposed it? Because I wasn't I would, on the commission. Uh, um, me neither. Know, but I don't have that information off the top of my head. We, we could get okay. that for you. Okay, so um, any further discussion on this motion? All right, then I'd like to call the question. Um, all those in favor, uh, signify by raising your hand. Two in I'm favor. Sorry. All those in opposed? favor of denying oh, oh, oh. without prejudice? The, yeah, the motion was to deny items one and two without prejudice and to approve item three as presented. Oh. Oh, okay. Can I vote in favor of that? Yeah, I'll approve. So there's three uh, that want to want to approve this motion and two and, and then are there any that don't want to approve that motion? I'm I'm one of them. Jim, are you voting on this? Um Yes, he is. Yeah. Mark made some very good points. Um, I wish there were, there were a way to convey to them. Could, could we, could we, I'm sorry, we've already been through all that. I don't think we need to restate that. It's already been made clear. I'd like, to, hope, keep moving. I'd like to keep moving forward. Uh, okay, I would like I'll to, go. I would like to talk about why I'm voting against that motion, if I might. Um, I think that the, um, that the, that item two, the, the applicant brought to us a, um, a, another type of a window that would be appropriate in my view. And so perhaps we could, um, see to it to um, amend this application and allow that double hung window to be uh, submitted um, and approved. And then, um, you know, item one, the location of the skylight, um, you know, doing something and 
begging forgiveness is not the approved method of doing it, but um, at this point, the skylight is um, is there. And if it were to move two feet to where it was approved, would would it really be that much more appropriate? Um, so I I would like to be um, a little bit more um, understanding and and um, and not get hung up on that again. So I would I would suggest that perhaps we could have a new motion that would um, approve items one and three and then uh, as presented and then approve item two with um, new double hung windows as presented uh, additional information after the application was submitted. I could approve that motion. You make a good point. So I, I actually, as chair, I probably shouldn't be making that motion, but that's just kind of what oh. I was saying. So oh. I, I would, um, I would encourage someone else to maybe rethink I, what we already voted on and, and, um, Perhaps, Can we make um, a new motion if we've already voted? Well, um, Chris, I made I made the original motion, and and um, okay. what I'd like to do is, um, perhaps as chair can't uh, make the motion, but would you provide uh, as much specificity as possible? Um, we don't uh, we we put an end to the miscommunication and. Um, yeah. provide certainty. I, I am certainty. I will, yeah, I I'm will. certainly open to your suggestions. I will. Can, can we do this? Because we did just vote. So and there was a ask, majority no, we, did not, we did not. Jim didn't vote. So no, we can do it. I'm going to ask. Um, yeah, I mean, point of order. I'm, I think um, Art is probably more versed in this than I am as far as Robert's rules go. I, I don't think the vote was actually completed. Um, I, I think I had to just, I had to, I had an opportunity to um, be the mi minority opinion. And so people are willing or are, are able to change their vote vote after a minority opinion is held during, according to Robert's rules. So I, I think, think that's moot, Chris, because I didn't hear, I didn't believe that Jim voted yet. So okay. uh, I, I'm of the I mind that vote. I can amend the motion and uh, if okay. you just provide specificity. Sure. So, so what I would, what I would suggest is that the motion might sound something like this: um, to to approve item one and item three as presented, and to approve item two with the new information that was presented by the applicant at this hearing, which included three new double hung windows to replace the three casement windows, which were installed. I'll be happy to second that. So is somebody, is somebody gonna make that motion? I'm just, I'm just, I'm writing it out, uh, Mr. Chairman. So, um, what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to re withdraw my prior motion, uh, and I'm going to propose a new motion, um, which is to approve um, items number one and number three as presented. Um, and with regard to item number two, uh, I propose uh, that um, we approve it. Um, with the new information uh, presented uh, today at the hearing um, to wit, um, three new double hung windows to replace the three casement windows. Okay, that's that sounds great. And is there a second for that motion? I'll second, Jim that. second. second that. Oh, okay. who did Jim? Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? 
The motion carries unanimously. Okay, thank you all very much. Um, thank you, Adam, Chris, turn things back over to you. Okay. Uh, we'll get into approve the minutes from the um, May meeting. We have Jim. Um, Alyssa, Chris, and um, Darren were here. So can we get a motion to approve the minutes, please? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second it. Darren, okay. Um, Jim seconds, all in favor? Motion passes unanimously. Um, repairs, 297 Harbor Road, replace roof and kind. 952 Old Post Road, replace garage doors in kind, replace cedar siding as needed, replace house plaque in kind. 1020 Old Post Road, repair brick and bluestone patio, repair brick walls with retra uh, retained brick. Uh, 260 Harbor Road, replace existing bluestone sidewalk in kind. 297 Harbor Road, replace roof in kind. <clears throat> 952 Old Post Road, replace three garage doors in kind, replace cedar siding in kind, replace plaque in kind. Is that the same one? I didn't do that once. I did. Oops. Yeah. Uh, violations. We had a slew of violations brought to our attention in the Old Post Road area. Um, 323 Old Post Road fence was not installed uh, per the approved COA. Um, and uh, I discussed that with the homeowner and they will be coming in for submitting application. 164 post road replacement of existing fence without uh, certificate or repair order. Um, 164, I forget if I talked to them or not. Yeah, they're going to submit an application. Um, 320, oh no, 323 actually it was installed uh, without a approved certificate and it was done by, or is that the sorry, previous owner. So the house changed hands and therefore we can't um, enforce the violation on that one. And there's another one, 121 Old Post Road, there's Belgian Block, enlargement of driveway without certificate. I have not heard from them, I believe. 21. Uh, 111 Old Post Road, installation of vinyl fence without certificate. Um, they <clears throat> um, plan to replace it with, with what was there previously, which is a wood fence. Um, it was a mistake on their part, according to them. 205 Beach Road, installation of Belgian block without certificate and lack of screening for uh, pool equipment. And 205. Beach. <clears throat> and that's it for violations. Um, whole business, we still have the, the, the handbook to go over, but since it's such a long meeting, I think uh, we can have a lot of discussions on handbook. Although, uh, one thing that came up was the swing set issue. We had, you know, the fact that swing sets are are under the regulation of the HTC, but it doesn't really specify how we regulate them in any way. It says that we regulate them. So it's sort of, I think that's a vague um, description of, of what of we're responsible for. And so we need to discuss, I think, what that should, um, what that should be when it comes to swing sets. I think it's just the location uh, myself and trying to make it as uh, invisible as possible, you know, depending on the lot. Etc. But we should definitely put something in the handbook regarding that. Um, anyone else have comments or thoughts on the handbook or things that have come up that that you think might be? Well, I, I, was... I was when I I was surprised that the handbook uh, is silent on decorative shutters. Uh, I would have yeah, that's another that, one. Shutters operable or not? Yeah. Um, I mean, they should look like they're operable, in you know, yeah, my opinion. I think 
Yes, I completely agree. The uh, the um, the development well, here in Southwark uh, has static shutters. And they, they well, hopefully, we voted against the shutters that that were just uh, submitted <laughs> to be face nailed to the side. But I, I, I'm recused. I, I, I wouldn't know. I was surprised at that. Darren, do you know does does Westport outlaw static shutters? I don't remember off the top of my head. There's a series of things that they don't really regulate because they're not part of the building. So I think window boxes are one that they don't regulate. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head mm -hmm. if shutters are one. I will look. They're in the process of overhauling their their um handbook right now. I do not believe that they regulate things like play sets at all. Um, they don't go so far as screening because a lot of the screening is landscaping and they don't regulate landscaping at all. And I think that's that's something that I flagged in the handbook as being kind of a slippery slope. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think, I don't remember about shutters though, but there, there's a lot of like t temporary structures. If something's, if like a tent is going up for 30 days or less, they don't regulate that. Right. Um, so there's, there's a lot of things about the handbook when I was reading through it that I think should be considered and carefully discussed. Um, but I can't remember about shutters. I'm sorry. Well, years ago in Alexandria, Virginia, the, the, the color of the mullions was legislated. Mm. As a result of Alexandria, it was back then looked gorgeous, absolutely splendid. Yeah. Uh, but you have to have black mullet. Right. See, paint color is not something I think any HDC regulates. I don't, I don't, I believe that's even in the state statutes. Um, I believe they did in Alexander in, in Virginia. I'm, I'm going back to the 60s, 70s. <laughs> um, well, that's all. Maybe they do regulate that down in Virginia, but in Connecticut, we do not. Yeah, we're talking about this. Yeah. So, there are some things in there that I think, but I think I, I Adam, honestly, I think I flagged all the ones that I saw at the time. Um, okay. I can't, I don't, I don't know if I flagged swing sets. I can't remember. Um, but I think I did put a comment in about considering 30 days or less as temporary structures and not being like regulating those. I think I did mm -hmm. flag and I think James did too, Jim, um, about, you know, using screening, um, landscaping. Um, I think there was a couple of discrepancies throughout the handbook where it was addressed in two different ways and just making sure. There's a consistency. Contradiction. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, another one that I think that really should be considered, particularly in cases like the Pequot, um, the, the Harbor Club is, um, yeah. you know, thinking about pre application processes where they come in and it's informal and they discuss with us. That is something mm -hmm. several HDCs do, and it proves very useful because by the time they get to the final application, they have an application that they already have an idea of what the consensus is, what will not fly, and they can come with something that is possibly more approvable. Yeah, that, that's kind of already in our handbook. handbook. Um, I didn't feel like it was outright blatant enough. And maybe that maybe that's because yeah, it yeah. was new. I was coming in new, um, but I didn't think it was outright blatant enough and and the, you know, stipulations around that um, clear enough. That's just yeah, my personal more of, a, opinion, more of a suggestion. Yeah. Um, one thing that I think should be in there um, is is a thing about training for the commissioners. Um, maybe there should be, you know, a requirement that any commissioner attend a training session with the state of Connecticut. Um, I think it would be really, really good if that was in there. So Fairfield is a CLG. Um, and as a CLG, it has certain requirements that it must um, hit when it comes to the HDC and the commission itself. One of which is training. There are two free trainings that are offered every single year. 
Um, one is through SHPO in coordination with the CT Preservation Trust, um, not Pre Preservation Connecticut now, um, where they come and do a local historic district training. Right. There's another training that just SHPO comes down and just does a training on their own, which is separate. So those are two free and they are offered every single year. The SHPO one, you have to reach out because they'll do it specifically for you. The right. other one where they do it in conjunction with Preservation Connecticut is a regional one. Um, I, when I was at Westport, we hosted one in Westport yes. and it was attended. I know. Uh, and, and so we, and so we, that should be in the handbook and we should actually require our commissioners to do that because I, I think there are commissioners uh, that have not attended a training and I think it's really um, helpful. Yeah. And the other thing, um, I don't know if this is of use, but I'll throw it out there. There's two other things. One is that when I work with other HDCs, I often suggest that legal training with the town, um, the town attorneys is always kind of a good thing just to understand some of the rules and regulations about what can and cannot be said, the boundaries that can and cannot be crossed, bias, all that kind of stuff, Robert's rules, all that kind of stuff. Um, well, it can be very pointed <laughs> training. There's ethics training that's offered as well. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Um, the other one that I would also say is if people are not familiar with the CLG requirements, um, when a town is a CLG, there's there's very stringent requirements on who can and cannot be on the commission. And could you, um, Jeremy, could you tell everyone what CLG stands for? That sorry, it's, sorry, certified local government. Thank um, you. And sorry about that. Um, so some of the things they CLG requires is that you first try to fill seats with people that are qualified and from certain qualified um, professions like architecture, landscape design, that kind of thing, things that are very visual. Um, and then if you cannot find people to fill those seats from those professions, you must have training for the people that come on the commission that do not have adequate backgrounds. So, I mean, this is all stuff that you might want to consider looking at. I don't think it all needs to be within the handbook, but it's something to be definitely um, aware of. Yeah, maybe when somebody's mm -hmm. applying to be a commissioner, that's, that's part of the, you know, the they see all that information, you know, yes. when they apply. I think yes. also there should be a, and again, I, we're, the meeting's really long. Maybe we should have a, a subcommittee meeting on the handbook to kind of wrap this up. I'd be happy to attend. If you want to reach out uh, with an email to coordinate a subcommittee meeting, I, I would be happy to be one of the members on that committee. I would too. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great idea. I think, and yeah, Darren, you've done a great job. I've gone through a lot of the comments you made already, and it's there's some great, uh, great comments in there. Adam, can I just ask one quick question before we move on or close or adjourn? Um, I yeah. know that it's coming time to think about as as a CLG, we have to um, turn in a yearly annual report for SHPO every single year to make sure we're in compliance. Um, and that's mm -hmm. something that I usually, when I was doing them, I would think about starting now. Who, who, how does that work here? Or does it go out of some other department building or for selectmen or do we not know? Um, I don't know, to be honest. Yeah. I, I've never done a report. Chris, have you yeah, ever had to do a report? It, it would go, it would go, it would come from us um, and it would go, it would go to SHPO, right? Yeah. yeah. And, um, and they'll usually help us with it. It's it's Are we really required to do it. I'm surprised they they would help. Um, yeah, I think they I think they did help me. It's not. I mean, I'm happy to do it if we need somebody to do it. I'm I'm so used to doing them at this point. But it would be Are we worth finding out. Yes, it's part of the what compliance does it, what does for CLG. What is the report? So the report um, entail. So the report is basically a diagnostics of what has happened on the commission over the last year. So it runs from October 1st to September 30th. Um, and the report takes into account any changes on the commission, who, who left, who was placed on. You need to take all the CVs of the people that were appointed when they were appointed. 
um, you have to make a list of all of the COAs that were reviewed and the outcome along with any votes. Um, also, you know, like I used to put in extra stuff just because I tracked it. Yeah, and that's just for minutes. You just put copies of the yeah. minutes in the report. Yeah, well, it, I kind of just, I tracked it as I went and I just put a big Excel sp spreadsheet and I sent it to them because it was literally four columns and they didn't have to wade through stuff. Um, there was, what else was there? There was any regulations that were put in, like, was there a new local historic district or a new local historic property that was designated that's now under HDC jurisdiction? There was, um, if the town acquired any historic buildings, usually that was no, but if they did, that would go in, that kind of stuff. And then you would attach the affirmative action statement. It's pretty yeah. straightforward. I mean, I, as I said, I'm happy to do it. It's, I'm so used to doing them now that I don't find them too terribly time consuming. And then, you know, I'm happy to you to give whomever wants to do it next time my Excel spreadsheet and we just plug in as we go. That would be That'd awesome. Be great. If you, yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I did that for Westport. I, they had a backlog, so I submitted five different years of, uh, of this stuff. So I'm used to, I'm used to doing this. Okay. So I'm happy to do I that. Don't, I don't, I don't know when the last time it was done. I don't know when the last time we actually submitted a report to, to them. Um, we might want to find out. <laughs> Chris, you, you, know, Chris said you, you didn't do it. I don't, I don't know either. Honestly, I, I don't recall. I remember okay. having to do that, but I don't remember when it was. Well, it would be great to find out. I'm happy to try to look into that and and submit all the back reports just to make sure we're up to compliance. Okay. Yeah, okay. Chris, if you could find out the last time if if you actually did one, and if you could um, just find out when it was. Yeah, I'll look. I'll look through my records and see what I could find. Okay. Excellent. Sure. All right. Well, I think we've had enough for one evening. Yeah. Yes. We entertain a motion to adjourn. I make the motion to adjourn. And I'll, I'll second, second it. it. All right. Okay. All right. Seconds it. All in favor. All right. Thank you, everyone. We're adjourned. So thank you very much. Thank you all. Wonderful.